welcome to Salty Saturday, the uh, the inaugural week of season two proliferation. I am Beer Day, and joined with me is the one and only Hertz Donut. How you doing, Hertz? I'm doing great. I'm eight and zero. He's eight and zero. Big news. Uh, he he continued the un, undefeated streak from last season. Eight and zero. Big win over uh, the venerable Nade. Um, we are also hopefully going to be joined shortly by the the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Furpo from Team the Poison Entropy. Blade Wielder himself. The Poison Blade Wielder, Wielder and Troll, what was it? Troll Bowl Tournament Tro- winner, champion. Furpo, yeah, he's you know he's the guy with the pen. He's got he's he's got a lot of roles to play in THL. <laughs> We're very excited to have him as a guest caster. Unfortunately, Cassidy could not make it as he has family and friends and stuff. So, you know. What? Or maybe you don't. Um, well, yeah, so we'll hopefully be joined by him, and, uh, and we'll be jumping into games. To go over the lineup tonight, um, we've got some really, really cool matches and a lot of new faces. So uh, we've got Asuna from the Boom Squad going up against Entropy's own Zaether, who was uh, a founding member of the original Alpha Season Entropy. Uh, that's going to be our first game. Second game is Gern Blanston, a breakout player from last season uh, from the Harry Generals. He's newly newly acquired by the Harry Generals, going up against the team captain of those filthy role players, Josh Sampson, longtime veteran of the league. And then closing us out is the one, the only MVP Parker, or MVP Parker, rather, uh, who is also newly acquired by the, uh, the very stacked Team Rank 5, going up against... Uh, comp from Dream Team, who is uh, coming back for his second season. And, by the way, adding drama to that match, Comp took out MVP Park, MV Parker in the last match of last season. So uh, Parker may be looking for some sweet revenge as Comp has, uh, has given him a run for his money in the past. All right, so we are going to be uh, hopping into this... Uh, we're going to be hopping into this game right now. To go over the classes, uh, this is the Asuna versus Zaether match. As- uh, Zaether is bringing Mage, Paladin, Priest, and Warlock. And Asuna is bringing Mage, Paladin, Shaman, and Warrior. So, uh, yeah, so uh, some some cool matchups. And I think we're going to be hopping into bands uh, uh, right now or, or really shortly. Looking at these matchups, I mean, they've got the Mage, they've got the Paladin. Um, Asuna bringing the the shaman and the warrior to uh, Zaether's uh, priest and warlock. Do you do you see any like um, anyone uh, having an initial uh, lead, Dan? Well, I feel like shaman with the new format where we all just Hello? bring. Hey, hey, is that, that Furpo? Furpo, what a tease! What a tease! Well, he's in the chat with us. We're going to get him, hopefully, on the mic soon. Um, jump in at any point, uh, Furpo or Jeff. Anyway, with the new <laughs> format, how uh, with only being able to being able to bring one deck of each time, type, or of each class, um, the, uh, the Warlock, I think, loses a lot of its versatility. Right. In a sense, you still don't know what they're going to bring, but as soon as you... Or you, you can't decide... You can't hold Warlock for last and decide between three or four different ones that you brought. Um, Absolutely. So you can't play Sack Pact or th- anything like that. Absolutely. But, yeah, yeah, so Shaman, is, it's a pretty obvious tell. And so in the old, in the old format, Shaman was... You basically forfeited that, that option for versatility. Right. Um, in the new one, it so doesn't really matter. there's one archetype, right. Right. One competitive archetype. Right, right, right. So we're getting news that um, we, we missed the bands as we are wont to do. And it looks like Asuna banned Priest and Zaether banned Mage. Um, so Asuna going after, like, that'll, banning the Priest gives her Shaman a better shot at getting a win. Um, and then the Mage ban from Zaether, um, you know, his lineup is very susceptible to Freeze Mage with the Paladin, the Priest, and the Warlock. So maybe he's playing around the Freeze Mage. Um, all of those classes are also somewhat susceptible to Tempo Mage, so those bands seem pretty solid from both people. I may um, have also just had a bad experience with Unstable Portal recently. Right, and so we're going to be jumping into this game right now uh, as they, they kick things off. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see what they open with. It looks like we're going to have a Paladin Mirror and a Suno with a Golden Paladin um, right off the bat. Uh, this is going to be a Secret Paladin from her. 
And Zaether looks like he might be running the, the old mid range paladin. Um, Dan, do you are you I can dig that? Uh, am I familiar with the matchup? Yeah. Uh, well, I know that as a secret paladin, it's pretty cool to get a secret and a secret keeper and then a cog hammer. So I know he's doing that right. <laughs> yeah, as soon with a great start, she will uh, she will have a pretty nice. You guys hear me now? I can't. Yeah. Hey, hear there's Purpo. Skype call, though. There we go. Um, yeah, we got Purpo, guys. Uh, so yeah, if you can, are you are you oh able my to God. witness the the absolute um, devastation as soon as raining down on Zaether? Did we lose him? Uh, we might have lost him. You are All killing right. me. Yeah, Furpo, you're 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 teasing us with the sultry the sultry pipes of yours. Um, seems like he's having some Skype issues. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll we'll get we'll get him on on uh on uh on track soon. Meanwhile, these Seaver keepers, uh, Buster's <laughs> a pretty. It's an all right counter to this. No, it's not. That's not true. Yeah, it looks like this is this is kind of now. The question we can't. We can hear you all along. Can you hear us? It looks like he can't hear us. All right. So a couple difficulties. Um, what about now? We can we hear can... you. We can still hear you. <laughs> um. So we'll try to get that fixed. Sorry, folks. Uh, but as I mean, not not a lot uh, of, of of description for this game right now. As not a lot of action missing. Oh, he could play yeah. another Avenge. I mean, as point a shredder. The oh gosh! Just destroying this mid-range paladin. Um, um. Okay. So he's as soon as taking an awfully long time here to do what seems relatively straightforward. Well, she may be con contemplating whether the coin is worth giving up here for the shredder play, um, because she wants to coin the challenger next turn. I personally would have liked to see the shredder drops because it's a ton of pressure. Yeah, I, I agree, but then I guess you are left then with a turn. You have to play the true silver off curve, which still seems fine, but I understand the trepidation. Yeah. Man. Yeah, this is this is pretty brutal for Zaether here. Like, I mean, how does he get through this? I mean, he's about to get like that. Yeah, that's just Well, I don't know if he if if the avenge if there's another avenge and he can get it to land on the challenger, then the keeper of Oldemon's going to do a s significant amount of work. Yeah. No, I completely agree. Uh it looks like it is nice for Zaether here as Asuna won't have any other minions on the board so he knows exactly where this avenge is going to land. Um yeah. we see the secrets. This is the typical four secret um Everything, but you know, not the redemption. Redemption is seen to be kind of weak, so people aren't really um, people because it usually just brings back a two-one. Yeah, yeah, and that 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 uh, that's this should be pretty easy for Zaether to chew through, but he's gonna have some more minions to deal with with the uh, with the uh, the shredder and the. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's as soon as not out of out of uh, out of the. Oh man, the juggle misses. Okay, so the competitive spirit. That's not hits. so bad. This is this is this could be a lot worse. Well, juggler into muster could clean. See, this yeah, it could be out. like that. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be a pretty rough turn for. Uh... Oh, okay. Yeah, sure, that makes sense. And he's gonna she's gonna get the five health, and she uses the last charge. Great play by by Asuna here. Um... And Zaether already used the Consecration, so cleaning up this board is going to be pretty, pretty difficult. Um, yeah, the Shredder, or uh, the Belcher, the hope would be that the Belcher can just absorb right, right. all of them, but that's not going to happen with, uh, with that True Silver. And she's going to go with the Pilot Shredder for an extra board, and she oh. gets the snipe. So that was a risky play. Oh, and there's the Hello? Consecration. So Hey. Hey, Jeff, can you hear us? 
Oh, man. Still having some issues, it seems. All right. Um, well, yeah, so Zaether is going to be able to contest this board, finally get his... Yeah, still not hearing any of you guys. I'm not sure why this has happened. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wow, this is really unfortunate. Um, yeah, we might have to we might have to try to fix this in, after this game is over, um, so we'll try to address that. Um, I'll, I'll continue to fearlessly cast. Um, yeah, Asuna with the top deck blessing is going to allow her to clean up this board pretty nicely, but the question is... Man, if this muster doesn't kill the shredder. Oh wow. Juggle. Juggle. What? Strong. Wow. Oh. Wow. So if Oh my god, that's pretty pretty rough for That's for hard Zaether to get here. over. Wow. So Zaether is going to be alive by one health at the end of this turn. Right? Uh, one health. Technically. Uh, Yep, okay, so he's still in it, but this is going to be uh, pretty, pretty tough. Um, yeah, I don't, unless there's a Reno in this deck. Oh, Z as soon as it assumes, n or, uh, doesn't push the true silver damage. Um, well, that might, I guess there's not a lot. Well, seen oh. both, she's seen both um, Consecrates, so... So he is technically alive. I mean, you quartermaster, you pop the shredder, see what happens. He's alive with the true silver swing. Is he? That's six. No, he needs he needs doomsday. Oh, yeah. So Zaythu's gonna fall to the ever powerful secret paladin. Um. Uh, and and uh, as soon as gonna get that win on the board. Um, I guess that's yeah. I haven't seen that much that often. Uh, Interrange Paladin kind of went the way of the Dodo Bird after uh, after Secret Paladin came out. So I haven't seen that too much, but it looks like the Secret Paladin does just fine. Um, all right, well, so Asuna with the, the first win, she still has her uh, Warrior and her Shaman. Uh, so uh, we, we're not really sure what those are going to be. The midrange, and we're, well, we're going to see, wow, a Patron Warrior coming from Asuna and a Zoo coming from Zaether. Um. You said wow on the patron. Is that really all that surprising? I feel like that's the the top tier warrior meta deck these days. Um. I agree. I think patron is the the top level. It's just it's one of the hardest decks in Hearthstone to pilot. Um. Mm -hmm. So it's you know like without the without the Warsong Commander, it's not quite. Uh, it's not quite as uh, um, easy to pilot or, or OP. Yeah, you know, there's a couple ways to say it, but like it, I just you know, it's um, it can be difficult to see. So we'll we'll see how she does here. Uh, Zoo is definitely a matchup she wants as uh, it doesn't run board clears, so she can get ahead on the board with the patrons. Um, she'll She's be got a, both in hand. Got both patrons in hand, but she doesn't have the death spite. Um, mm -hmm. She has no whirlwind activators. She's also running the double frothings, which can get really out of hand quickly um, if if Zaether doesn't doesn't deal with them. Well, Zaether, he's got two implosions though. He does have two implosions, and he's got this. Uh, this Abusive. is pretty good. Um, yeah, this is really really good for for Zaether. He's able to control this board, and without the whirlwinds, these like kind of one health minions are actually really annoying for Asuna to deal with. Um, but, you know, Asuno, there's tons of draw mechanics. She's got the coins. She's not in any, like, rush to get there. So um, I think I think she'll be okay uh, for now. Um, yeah, the, the, the way the zoo wins here is it pressures the patron player so much that the patron doesn't have time to really get those big back-breaking combos off. Um, and the way the patron wins is by having this hand. <laughs> yep. Yeah, picking up the whirlwind is huge. Um, she can, she can, uh, Yeah, hit really... the gang boss. Oh, 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 she still has the coin. I find that strange that... Nope, nope, all right. Well, armoring up before hitting doesn't really matter because she doesn't run the shield slams, so, like... I guess she's holding off on the whirlwinds to activate the patrons. So I guess that means I don't know what I'm doing, because I would have used oh, that to control oh, yeah. the whole Oh, no, 100% waiting on the whirlwind for the patron turn. That, right. that makes perfect sense. She'll probably pop this egg. Uh, or I'm sorry, not this egg, the spider, and then um, 
just drop the patrons and whirlwind because like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that i mean she could that do that she's got double patrons so i think she could go for that play at this point but she will be punished if she does um oh, she could also go slow like it's not a ton of pressure she could drop a frothing and an armor smith knock off the uh the imp gang boss i like that play a little bit more and she's going to go with that play. I like that play a little bit more because, you know, she's got tons of different ways to interact with these patrons. Tons of de cards that could be really good um, with the patrons, like Inner Rage, um, you know, Unstable Goal, uh, Despite. There's lots of different ways for her to get more patrons. Um, so she could just wait a little bit longer. And uh, and these Frothings have to be dealt with by Zaether. So Zaether's going to waste his energy um, dealing with those. If he implodes on this board, that's, uh, that's pretty bad. Now you say waste his energy, but I feel like he's got a fair amount of energy to spend in his hand. He's got, for a zoo hand, an incredibly reactive one. Uh, which is not all that common. Does? Whoa. Hmm. So he's... All right. Doing this, which is okay. Um, uh, it's okay, but he's using a lot of that reactivity that, like, he would want for the patrons, so it's kind of a little awkward. Um, so it looks like Asuna's gonna go for the slam. Her hand's kind of unwieldy. I, I probably would go with the acolyte. Acolyte. This turn. Would you I whirlwind would it as well, whirlwind. or just drop it? I probably would use the whirlwind at this point, just because I mean, like that's insane. Um, at the same time, if he can't kill anything, or if he, right. yeah, if, then the damage. board's full. And yeah. if you're gonna have a full board, the more one ones, the better. Okay, so Asuna uh, agrees with you there. We see a Drag Corsair, um, definitely a flex card in the deck. Um, she likes it, and Zaether literally can't do anything. Um, he's got really a very strong hand, but he's, he's waiting for Asuna to do something. In the meantime, he'll just be driving home, what is that? Four, six, ten damage. Ten damage. So that's not sustainable for Asuna. Um, Are you at all surprised that he didn't use uh, one of his Defender of Argus's? Well, he can't. It's a full board. Right. So you're not <laughs> surprised. Which was your own your own observation. Well, so I, yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep, yep. I think this might be time to, to drop the patrons and whirlwind. Um, it's not ideal because you're only going to get two patrons, but it's and one's going to get killed off. But yeah, and the Merla, yeah, the Mergleton is off by one mana to be able to get the Mage here power. Yeah, <laughs> wasting no time. Um, yeah, probably would have liked the Dread Corsair to come down there instead of the heal. Ac Coin Acolyte is fine, I guess too. That's a fine. I guess that's okay. Uh, he's gonna, this is gonna allow Zaether to open up board. Oh, wow, he finds the owl. So Zaether really, his hand can handle, can handle the, the, the hell out of patrons. Um, he probably, Fender. Oh, this is oh, a, this hell. is a nifty play. All right, all hey, right. You've got nothing to worry, you don't have any brawls to worry about. I like that play a lot. Yeah, he does. He kind of keeps his uh, he keeps I mean, his uh, his Nerubian from losing. And this this Gromish just isn't enough. I this is I, next turn lethal. Yeah, as soon as she can patron whirlwind inner rage or battle rage into nothing. Um, well, she won't have enough mana to play anything. So she goes with this play, but uh, is that enough? Five, seven. Well, we got to see what the dark peddlers have. Yeah, she's one power for, or he's, Zaether's one power overwhelming. Ooh, these are bad. Lowly Squire is definitely the right one there. Um, nothing. Oh. No. Oh, Reliquary Seeker. Reliquary. Reliquary is. Totally good. All right. Pretty good. Yeah, uh, if I'm Zaether here, I don't even know if I'd trade. I might just, I don't know. I, I guess this is fine. I, I just really want to apply pressure. But he's got this in the bag. Tap last is like an enormous misplay. Um, Tap last is that, that's more of a that's that's asserting dominance. Yeah, I guess he's like whatever. Yeah, it's fine. So she can battle rage and look for that 
that brawl, but she's gonna get out of here. So Xanther yeah, ties it up play. with the zoo win. Um, uh, Steve, are we able to restart the call to try to get Jeff in here, or should we not do that? I don't know. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna try to, to restart our call, and then we will, we'll be right back um, with the call. The, the, the stream should stay live, um, and we're gonna try to get everyone's favorite uh, author in the call, Furpo. All right, so stick with us. All right, we're back. Uh, hey. That was really, really quick. And thanks to uh, everyone, thanks to Jack Sox for uh, helping with production tonight. Uh, Jedi was not able. So hopefully we'll, this will work with, with Furpo. Um, we are jumping into game three. And Asuna is bringing back the game Pacing three? Warrior. Uh, yep, game three. Who won the first game? Uh, the first game Asuna won with Secret Paladin. Right, 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 right. Yes. That was just so overwhelmingly quick. It was so quick, yes. Uh, and it looks like this is going to be the mid-range paladin against Asuna's uh, bringing uh, the patron back. Patron, and this is a matchup that like is almost unwinnable for the mid-range paladin. Mm -hmm. uh, it is extremely, extremely, extremely hard to win. That being said, Zaether just pulled out a win with the Zoo, which is also unfavored against the uh, the patron. Um, but it looks like. Asuna's got a couple more, you know, she's got the uh, right. a, a better curve here. She really? was, yeah, she was a bit clogged up last time with mm -hmm. getting all the patrons and the, she had both patrons and both berserkers, right. basically right off the bat. And only uh, one weapon against Zoo, which is pretty rough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think, yeah, Paladin just gets so many small minions on the board. Yeah, Paladin gets a lot of small minions on the board. And we saw a Justicar in this Paladin. So right. that's now a liability. <laughs> right. The, the, the thing the Paladin can do is there's a couple ways it can win it. It can get the, uh, the, the, the Quartermaster down, yep. which can apply like a ton of pressure. And um, it can match one for one on the... Then all of the Silverhand recruits can take out a, a Grim Patron. Right. It also, it also can... It, you know, if Zaether's really careful, he can save his equality... And really crush Asuna if she goes all in on a patron turn. I really like this play by Asuna. She just like slams, you know, she gets a draw, she's able to not you know nullify any pressure. Um so it looks like yeah, it looks like we're uh Oh man. Oh, and the one health creature coming out of the shredder um is is gonna be really, really rough for Zaether. Um So, yeah, and this is the difference. Like, th look at this hand, but from Asuna. She's got the Death Spite this turn, this game. Like, she's got everything she needs right now to win. Um, if I'm Zaether right here, I see that Death Spite go up. I I don't know. I probably would have gone with the Belcher. I don't know. This is just really rough. He has absolutely no response to these patrons. So he's about to see four patrons on the board and has no spells in his hand. This is devastating. So Suna can just pop off here with the patrons. There's no reason not to. Um, it's gonna, yeah. It's this is gonna be. This is just the the dream for the patron player. And Zaether's got to be, just like you got to be kidding me right now. Um, and in addition to this, Asuna has like a really good follow up hand. She's got the frothings with the the board full of patrons. She's got the pressure cards with the uh, with the. Uh, um, Corcoran Elite, and with the Grom. Uh, so she's got, and then she's got the follow-up. Uh, um, she's got the Death Spite as well. So she's she's in a good spot here. Uh, Zaether is not. Huh. So Zaether goes with the one health minion, the one health patient. Not typically, I guess he's trying to block the trade on the Lotheb. Um, which makes sense. Just Does really it? rough. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> I don't know. It's a tough. It's I mean, just it, a tough you spot. lower the value, but I mean, you lower the perceived value because then he gets to trade a three-one in. But but there's a three-three sitting there. They can just become more patrons. That yeah, I, I feel like you. That might have also just been something of a concession. Yeah. Um, screw it. I mean, Asuna able to deal with that really efficiently. 
Um, and she's able to get the Frothing Berserker out, and Zaether is uh, at 14. So yeah, this is this is this is rough. Also, Asuna developing the death spite right in time for Grom. So even if Zaether had a quality consecrate, uh, he could just lethal him with the death spite and the Grom. Yep. Yeah, this there's is, really not a whole. This, this is, over. is rough. And yeah. Zaether's like, you know, you know, I've seen enough. I can I do that math. I, guys, guys, I, I just got on the call. Just, how is Zaether doing this game? Zaether is not doing anything he's just uh conceded actually uh, <sighs> yeah your boy your boy is in trouble um give me he, up to speed how bad is it just break it to me we'll, we'll catch quick. you up, bro. he is down one to two he's the mid-range paladin is just not getting it done for him um are you able to spectate yeah i awesome. i can see it now yeah okay so we got we got furfo guys finally got him on the call thank um, you for your patience oh you're good things are worth Welcome. waiting for um, so, yeah, we got Asuna with the Totem Shaman. Love it. Love <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, a uh, well, so Totem Shaman, obviously not, not, uh, as well known as the, uh, it's, it's brother, the Aggro Shaman. Um, and Shaman's worst matchup is, like, maybe even Midrange Paladin. <laughs> I don't know that I would say it's not as well known. <laughs> everyone knew about it back when everyone talked about how shaman's unplayable why would you play shaman you can't play shaman don't bring shaman things like that conversations of that nature i think there was like like a day where strife go tanked his legend rating to like the five digits with this deck if i'm not yeah. mistaken i yeah. think i think all of us have had that day it's like you know what oh I yeah I for sure i work. remember that time i tanked my <laughs> yeah. legend rating i have that opportunity all the time <laughs> Well, Asuna, Asuna is uh, is developing these eggs, kind of a long term investment. Um, Zaether is <laughs> hey, she's one flame tongue totem away from just demolition. wreaking havoc. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it, I mean, she, her hand's pretty strong. We see the bloodlust. Like, I mean, this this is starting to look like a good idea. Um, I don't know. I oh, not not the totem. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a different totem. Do you Urshock you? <laughs> Looking for a different totem. Furbo, are you familiar with the, the, with the totem shaman? Uh, you know, I, I like everybody, I probably played it for an hour or two after TTT released because we all thought it was going to be incredible. <laughs> hey, man, I you... got to rank five with it. Yeah? That, yeah. I, that's better than me. I fell to... a lot to... further, but I, yeah. I did. I actually was... I only did it because it... I was amazed. I was... Oh. Yeah. I actually I crafted. I actually played. crafted a totem carver one. I was like, I need to complete the deck. I can't wait to pack one. <laughs> the totem I need my hands carver? on it right now. Yeah, whatever that one is that gets plus one plus one for totems. It is the totem carver? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Wow. And it looks like as soon as about to just bloodlust Zaether right out of this, out of these eggshells. Um, eggshell the right word? I don't know. Wait, but now the egg doesn't. Yeah, yeah that's rough. That that's, was uh, uh... the healing totem. Thank you, Healing Totem. Yep, yep. That Healing Totem was the difference there. Um, I think Zaether is still just in a really good spot here. And his Midrange Paladin is going to be able to get get on the board, it looks like. And uh, Team Entropy, right? Right, Furpo? Furpo from Entropy, of course. Yeah. And Furpo, you had a big week. You, uh, you, took down, you took down Asuna's team captain in D-Lyman. I did. How did that did. feel? It felt pretty good, but uh, it was... It was an incredible series of lucky events that led to that win. I mean, I know he's got the never lucky reputation, but right. it, w it was one of those wins that I will take. I was glad it wasn't streamed. I can just say that it was incredible play. <laughs> there, there's no Boomot or Knife Juggler shenanigans that happened. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, Asuna is finding herself where most shamans do, at 10 health, not with a strong board, and no cards. <laughs> um... <laughs> kind of a rough position and Zaether really just in, in in a great spot here i think it, i would muster by the way i want to point out Zaether floated to mana luster and didn't hear power i don't know if there's any is there any reason he would have done that anything anyone see no. any reason yeah okay did he just trade something away that we like a mind control tech play but 
No. Yeah, but, I mean, there's. I thought initially he didn't want to. He didn't want to allow him to pop the. Oh, he didn't want the juggle to pop the egg. Okay, that makes sense. Oh. Right. Okay. Look at sure. there. Heads up. Okay. Um, he trades his juggle. I guess he really just doesn't want to pop that egg, huh? Well, the rock bite. Rock biter is gonna do that. Well, for... yeah. If you. Can, <laughs> you can just continue to assert dominance. Yeah. Although, and, wait, uh, what? What would be popping the egg if he? Used well, hero if he hero-powered, the juggler could have juggled the egg. Oh, when the juggler was alive. Right, okay. Right, I thought right, you were right. saying right now. Right. And so he wanted to wait for his turn in case he popped mm -hmm. it, then he could deal with it. So it makes sense. Um, wow, Asuna rolls Ooh, the seven. Yep. But will that be enough? Zaether is top deck in the rag. It looks like Zaether's really taking the control pretty heavy. I mean, it's a good play. Like, you know, Asuna really only has one card in her hand. Um... Your he, minions are both one health anyway. Yeah, this is this is a pretty a pretty strong play. So he's just gonna take it slow here. Um, and it looks like it looks like this this mid range paladin, which was definitely getting Zaether in some hot water, might uh might find a win. And so last up, he's gonna have yeah he he's a priest. Oh no, that was banned. Sorry, he has a he has a mage. Furpo, any inside information on on uh, Zaether's mage? Um. You know, I don't. I if it's the one I'm thinking, he might be bringing it. Uh, it this could slow the match down a bit. I would say. Oh, I would God. say get your get your neck pillows in position. Um, neck pillows. Okay. So, oh man, there goes the the concede. So we're gonna see what this titillating mage deck is. So everyone, get I your just neck I pillows. can only hope that there's someone casting who who is an experienced player of it. <laughs> Yeah, if this is Freeze Mage, everyone just go to sleep. I'll uh, I'll take it from here. Go to sleep. <laughs> the sweet, sweet sounds of, oh, this hand is so good. This is <laughs> such a good hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's a, it's a Golden Mage, so it looks like Zaether, Zaether is uh, pretty familiar with it. It is Freeze Mage. It looks like it's Freeze. Yeah, it looks like it's Freeze Mage. Um, he's, I know he's a fan, too, of kind of the grinder varieties. No, no, but... no. Nope, oh, no. it's arena. <laughs> it's not freeze mage. Nope. Yeah. All right, so uh, that's a Reno mage, right there, folks. Um, I also want to point out he mulliganed away his two AOEs against a deck that is completely built around board control. Yeah, um, but you don't want to keep a six and a seven just sitting yeah. dead in your hand. That's totally fair. And he gets the zombie chow, and he's actually got board control minions. That makes total sense. Um, he actually, well, just a little background on the stack. When we were uh, for team practice, he actually got into a match with a with a golden monkey priest that I think almost lasted forty five minutes. So well, uh, that just sounds <laughs> awful. That sounds like pure. Yeah, that sounds absolutely rough. And and a suit like there's not really many mages that run a, a zombie chow other than a grinder mage, and the grinder mages have really been replaced by the Reno mage. So. If Asuna is kind of up on the meta, she'll probably know exactly what deck this is, kind of from like the initial um, minion. Now, I found that strange that Zaether played. It seemed like kind of a dead turn to play the ice block with full health when he had the the mirror entity in hand. Am I alone in that, or did he um, just miss out on free shredder? Yeah, it was interesting to play the... Well, they both took really interesting line of plays. Asuna didn't play the Feral Spirits, and then Azather didn't play the Mirror Entity. Um, very, very interesting uh, lines of plays there. I think Asuna might have been trying to play around, slash still might be playing around Counterspell. Right. Um, and so that might be the reasoning from using that... Uh, that mm -hmm. um, there, and now she might just play the... Actually, she, she probably just wants to play the uh, Belgar Destroyer. Um... I also found the Shredder over the Felgar Destroyer really interesting there. Also, okay, I'm just finding all this very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why she's not playing the Felgar Fire, Fire. Fire Destroyers. Yeah, I mean, you don't mean you you don't have a tough experience casting the Grinder Reno Mage and the Totem Shaman it's matchup. Totem Shaman, yeah, I it's mean, hot. come on. I don't know how this goes. I'm I'm out of my <laughs> I'm out of my element here. Also, that's a Pyroblast. I didn't know that was a Grinder Reno Mage card. Um, but it is, apparently. Um, Maybe Zaether just doesn't like labels, John. La yeah, he's, too, he's, he's a hipster, you know? 
No, I like it. I mean, these are these are some these are some cool decks here. Um, and it looks like Asuna is gonna just put the pressure on. However, there is a Reno in his hand, and he has Ice Block up, so like that could really really come back to hurt her. All well, right, it's going to so. be important to pop that block before the Reno comes down. So I wonder how. Well, I, never mind. He's just going to kill the whole board. Yeah, and he's going to coin out the Acolyte or the Mirror Entity. The mirror okay. Entity. Well, Zuna is on five mana. Oh, no, she's on seven now. Okay. Oh, wow. And there's the Dr. Doom. It's turn seven, so. Yeah, Dr. but that secret Doom. just came down, and you know. Mm. Well, it wasn't a counter spell. It wasn't like. Oh, my oh, God. Fearless. Just yeah. diving Fearless. in. Oh. Yikes. Absolutely brutal. Oh, and it's a gold encounter. Or, uh, yep. Yep. Mm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So kill the 2 2 with the wolf. Oh, that's, that's pretty brutal. And we see Zaether. Oh, she's going to go with the. Uh, that play. We see Zaether with the BGH, too. So he's just. He's just. Singing his. Uh, his Reno Mage song. I don't know what that means. Somebody else, I don't, save me. <laughs> I don't think we know which song, Sean. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, so have you played uh, this this Reno Mage, uh, Furpo? You know, um, I meant to do it, but I just didn't have like an hour and a half available to get through to, the to play game. to do the first yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was. It was it was literally when he play, he was played one game on ladder with this deck, and I think we got through like three or four matches within the team while he was oh playing like God. while he was giving us like live updates on the uh the game <laughs> no and I, i'm trying my best to cast this but there's like actually a wall in my house that we just painted and and watching this paint dry is really distracting it's just <laughs> <laughs> me from it's so much more interesting <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i get that i understand oh um... and the thing is though when you play these decks for the person playing it these turns go by so fast. Like, you were thinking about every card you could draw because you're playing so many singletons, you're trying to read their deck, and it's the ex the time passes in the exact opposite way for anybody watching it, unfortunately. Anybody else, yeah. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. But these decks are so fun to play. Yeah, right now, Zaether's just, like, gripping the arms of his chair, and he's oh, like, oh, he my is... God, this is a roller coaster ride. <laughs> yeah. Well, Asuna's got a good play here. She's got the uh, the spell power into the into the crackle. Mm -hmm. She she must know. I mean, I think she's eliminated the possibility of this being every secret except for Ice Block. So she she must have identified that that uh, that secret by now. And uh, yeah, she's. I mean, she's she just needs to find the bloodlust. But you know, the problem is he has the Reno. Um, Although he doesn't have a great way to clear the board. So, uh, you know, if he Reno's, it might be like kind of Reno-ing against a secret paladin. If they've got a huge board down, um, it, the Reno doesn't really impact too much. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Zaether can uh, Blizzard here and kind of look for the, for the, the uh, Flame Strike. He has 14 cards left. She has 15 cards left. And it looks like he's going to go with that play um, just to kind of... That seems fair, because next turn he yeah. can also he can get two cards out of the acolyte. Absolutely. Or none. Uh, you know and, these mages. Uh, sorry, what were you gonna say for real? I was gonna say you guys just saw in the trade with the Drake. You think he had to do it? Should he try to start whittling the health down into pyroblast range? Or oh, I I don't think so. I think you, I think you have to kind of control the board a bit. Yeah. Because I, this I like... is just gonna get completely out of control. You could either just. Yeah, maintain complete dominance. Oh my god. Ayo. That's huge. Yep. He can Hmm. Yeah, I think this is the one you have to go with. Yeah, That's okay. Bad. And he can even play the Lotheb to just sort of seal out like a lot of uh any burst potential or anything. Um Wow. That's that's an enormous pickup. And now Asuna is just really looking for some card draw. Manatide Totem here would be huge for her. The Flame Tongue would at least give her the board back. Right. She goes for the Feral. Right. Eight mana Feral Spirits. Oh. 
Oh, mama. Supply and well, demand. Yeah, that is that is it's rough. It's a joke about things being expensive. That's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it looks like she or uh, Zaether can go with the flame, the torch here. No, forgotten torch. Okay. I feel like the forgotten torch made a lot of sense, but all right. Yeah. All right. Mm. Suna cannot punish unless can she pop if she finds what is that four flame tongue? Oh, but she gets the mana tide. That's something. That's something. But that's also a lot of board presence on the other side. <laughs> it sure is. Yep. Yeah. 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 Hex that off. I mean, Sather's so essentially at 39 health right now. Yeah. And you have no hand if you're the shaman. It's just not looking good. He's so, at 39 plus an extra turn. Yeah. The question is <laughs> does Zaether play the Reno before the pop, the ice block is popped, or after? I think before, if you can, it, it's a game of limbo. Right. So now, I, definitely. Yeah, I yeah, think this... I would take it here. He can, uh... Okay. And she gets the one draw. He, he, oh, wow, he's Alexstrasza. <sighs> Who? So you definitely use it now, right? Like, you use the Reno now, and then that Alexstrasza allows you to even... Because you really... Oh! That was a ballsy move. Yeah. I don't quite follow that, but all right. He has I guess they figured it had torch. to happen, otherwise the... Lo well... Yeah, that Forgotten Torch has to happen. Okay. Well, he's gonna he's gonna play it, and Asuna still cannot pop. That's brutal. Man, this is gonna be one hell of a Reno. She just has no idea... Or maybe yeah. she knows exactly what's coming. And to be completely honest, Zaether could even go with just the Alexstrasza to develop the body. He's got nothing else he wants to play this turn. I would go with the Alexstrasza. Oh, wow. Oh, he has, oh right, he has Pyroblast. So even with the ice, oh, this yeah. has turned into Freeze Mage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. He's going to put us out of our misery. Asuna is going to be unpleasantly... Actually, she might just be dead no matter what. She can pop the block and then trade the five and the four into Alexstrasza, and she's still well, She can dead. fire elemental with the five and kill off the two. Oh, yeah. No, of course she's dead. It's a power blast. Right, right, right. But she's dead to board, like, from her perspective. So she wants right. to see if she can find... Well, that's a good one. That's a really good one. So she can kill off the Alexstrasza. I'm just from her perspective. Obviously, she's right. dead. But from her perspective, you want to kill off the Alexstrasza with the 5 and the Fire Elemental. Run the 4-4 four, four in. Um, but she's, I think she's tested for every single secret under the sun, and none of them have been uh, popped. So it's pretty obvious this is an ice block. All right, so she gets there. Um, really, really well played. Really cool deck, too, from Zaether. Zaether bringing, so Zaether brought mid-range Paladin, kind of, Kind of off the radar deck. Okay, so Asuna's gonna not pop this turn. Um, obviously, it doesn't really matter. As the Pyro Blast comes down, and Entropy continues to draw blood Ooh. from Boom Squad. Anybody else disappointed by Pyro Blast animation? Yeah. Yeah, it's just like a... It's just like... It's kind of like fat. It just like it's rolls just off your Yeah, face. it feels lazy. It just, yeah, it just yeah. doesn't not, feel... Not that the work that went into creating it was lazy, just that the, the fireball itself looks... <laughs> the... Yeah, I, 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 I agree. It's just not... It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's the highest amount of damage you can do with one card, right? Correct. It's basically yeah. the equivalent of... Um, what, one of, the, one of the artifacts. Oh, right. Yeah, right. So it's, I mean, yeah, and it just doesn't... It just, just it's kind of underwhelming. Well, that's going to be game one, or that's going to be, yeah, the first match done. Uh, that is going to go to Entropy, and Entropy is uh, is faring very well this week. As uh, as we said, Furpo got a win, and Jack Sox took Tiny Hippo back behind the woodshed, and I don't, I'm going to stop that analogy right there, um, got, but got a 3-0, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, so... So, yeah, you, so you, I don't know if that locks it up or not, but... Uh... It does, yeah, because you guys have okay. three, three wins, so... You're going to take the full win, but you guys still have Twiz to play Danny Wu and Arthur Rhodes, or sorry, Salt to play, uh, to play Brunson. So, uh, so still, still a lot 
of action to go on between that match, but it looks like you guys are going to take it at least with the three wins. So uh, congrats to Entropy. Um, all right, so our next match is going to be between Gern Blanston of the Harry Generals and Josh Sampson, the captain of those filthy role players. Uh, Gern Blanston is bringing... Uh, I just had it up. Gern Blanston is bringing... Uh, Druid Mage Warlock Warrior. Well, Josh just... Did you see that? Golden Gazrilla. <laughs> just... Just getting just, ready. Just getting ready. Yeah, is, is, is he, he bringing Hunter? Hunter? Oh my god, is he bringing I would Hunter? Lo- yeah, you gotta bring him. <laughs> jo- no, you Josh have is, to. He's bringing Mage no, no Paladin Hunter. Rogue Warrior, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, so, uh... Well, we need to put something in the bylaws where if you unpack a Golden yeah. Legend... <laughs> Obviously. Before... <laughs> yeah, so we'll be getting into that game first. So going over those lineups, like, let's take a look at these. Like... Josh is bringing Mage, Paladin, Rogue, Warrior. Josh is uh, probably bringing Oil Rogue, probably Secret Paladin. The Mage is a bit iffy. The Warrior is probably Control. He likes the Control Warrior. And Gurn Blanston bringing Druid, which there's really only one. Mage, kind of hard to say. Warlock, Warrior. Um, What are you going to ban if you're Josh Sampson here, looking at that lineup? What do you think? Furpo? Um, Just to go over it again. Gurn, yeah, let me. Druid, Mage, Warlock, Warrior, and Josh has. Almost... Uh-huh. Yeah, I think you almost always, if you see a Druid, I get the feeling like you banned a Druid. If you see a Druid in the wild, you just up to it future Furpo opponents. <laughs> well, the only other time I don't ban a Druid is if someone has been like bragging on the Facebook about how high they got in Legend with a certain deck. Right. Then, then, then I immediately ban that one. Everyone, take notes. Everyone. <laughs> this is how you. This is how you learn inside of Furpo's head. Um, a lot of times, for what we do, Dan and I, we just sort of lie. We're just pathological liars. So we get on here and we just, we just throw out. You, that's kind of what you have to do as a caster. You it's just... true. When I say that I'm terrible at freeze mage, it's all a ploy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you'll, you'll get there, though. Yeah. But anyway, no. Um, yeah. I, the druid. The druid is just. It's a class that like is. It's just so frustrating, right? Because like, if it gets wild growth, if it gets innervates. And then, like, it throws a couple things on the board, and then wham, bam, you're dead. Like, combo. It's just such a, an annoying class to play against. So I yeah. kind of agree there. Like, you see a druid, you know, season alpha on the Harry Generals, we had a saying, always ban druid. Like, it's just it's just a good, it's a class that, like, can do well against anything. Even the hard counters lose to it a lot. Um, it's fine, too. Like, you brought up a good point about your mindset. And, I mean, I'm not, like, that totally stoic type of Hearthstone player. You know that we that most people are, I imagine. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, when I get bursted down from like twenty, mid twenties with that druid deck, you know, uh, I will tilt. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's it's one. I, I yeah, I've gotten to the point where like if I'm on ladder and it's turn nine, and I just see the well played from the druid, I just like <laughs> I just turn off my computer. I don't even <laughs> wait for the combo. They totally like I'm out of there. I don't need to hear you. You know, druids are just the worst. Um. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty silly. So I I agree. The druid the druid ban makes sense, especially if Josh is bringing control warrior. Like, and if that's a freeze mage from Josh, like he certainly is going to want to ban the druid. However, if that's a patron warrior, and if that's a tempo mage, the druid's actually uh something he's probably gunning for. Um, a dangerous game, a very dangerous game. So uh, we're gonna try to get these guys uh, into bans soon. Um, somebody tell Gurn to add me. <clears throat> Gurn looks like he just hopped into play mode. Okay, no, he's preparing a battle for it now. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, and Gurn, yeah, he was kind of a breakout player uh, last season. He did. He actually he put up a, a really great article on the blog, something that Jeff runs, uh, about kind of playing as a father. This is a really really cool cool post. Um, so check that out if you're you're trying to figure out how to wait. That, you're right. That was like completing a gold collection and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had, mm-hmm. he wrote both of them. Yeah, I mean, I think he's just got a great handle on the game, and he's one of those guys who I think is just going to keep getting better and better and better. If he, you know, as long as he's in THL. Right. No, I completely agree. He's a really intelligent guy. He 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 talks about his time constraints. Um, speaking about the blog, uh, the the blog on THL that, as I said, Furpo runs. Furpo, do you want to do you want to talk about like how if somebody wants to write something, how what what are the kind of things you guys are looking for to you know um, mainly. The, the top thing we're looking for is if they'll just allow me to take all the credit for whatever they write. If they let me, if they <laughs> right, let me post right. it to Facebook, it, ideally, if they even let me have the byline, that would be terrific. Um, 
No, I mean, honestly, like, we are pretty much, if you have any ideas, even if you haven't written something yet, you know, oftentimes we'll get submissions with, like, an already written, you know, four, five, six thousand word post in some cases, you know, like Bible no novellas. Um, but other times someone will just have an idea, and it's, we're more than happy to just kind of work, flesh out the idea, and kind of get it into, like, a sort of, like, you know, article kind of blog posty type format that uh, is known and loved throughout THL. Right. Right. And, and, and as you said, like he, Furpo will, you'll, you'll kind of help them walk them through the process. And he's a fantastic you writer. You heard it here, folks. If you have an inkling of an idea, spam Furpo. <laughs> spam Furpo. There it is. Yeah. It. Give you the credit. I, I can just, I can just throw my cell phone number out here. Right. And, uh, <laughs> totally just start. Yeah. Text me at any time of day. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, but I think it's I think it's I think it's really great. Like we've uh, I know a uh, comp right now is working on a pretty cool write up for a deck that he actually first posted to the competitive Hearts, Hearthstone Reddit. So, yep. Um, I think there's a there's a lot of just great knowledge about the game in this league, and if you feel like you have any inkling to share it, yeah, get on the awesome. blog. Yeah, it's a, it's a great medium, and we've seen like some amazing articles. And then like before a lot of the show matches. Uh, you know, Furpo will do these great interviews and kind of get give you some more background, um, which really like helps flush out the players. Uh, um, so, it's 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 a fantastic medium. By the way, just to give you an update, the uh, Giddy or uh, I'm sorry, Gern and uh, Josh are just they're doing the uh, the new ritual of taking screenshots to make sure that each of them are just bringing one class, one deck per class. So just to give you an update on what on the status of that, but yeah, the blog is just a a. Uh, oh, and you know, they did bands. And they did bands. Okay, so we're trying to get this worked out. Um, but yeah, the blog is just an awesome, awesome place to see stuff. Um, like you know, a lot of stuff goes down on the Facebook, which is great. You know, a lot of community there. But if you want a more in depth experience um, and a lot of insight from uh, various players around the league, definitely check it out. All right. Well. Uh, yeah, so we're going to get the ban information. We're just getting all this sorted out. As I, as I said, this is our first week of doing this new one deck per class uh, format. And kind of on that topic, I'm just wondering if I could get your guys' feelings about the deck name meta. Like, what do you go for? Do you try to intimidate? Do you try so, to break the ice with a funny joke? What do you guys I'm do? actually glad you brought that up because uh, let me go to my decks real quick. Let you know what I named them. <laughs> yeah. I, I uh, went with a... A uh, paladin named Patron, a druid named Control, a priest named Agro, a warrior named Token, and a warlock called Too Many to make a joke. <laughs> I kind of yeah. did something similar. I also did the confuse and bewilder approach, but I just used a single character. Oh. Mm. So it would be like, what does what an asterisk? What does that mean? An so Ambershan? You you what? wanted them you wanted them to be like distracted like still like kind of like disturbed while you're still playing almost them. yeah yeah so this explains how you beat d lyman it had nothing to do with skill it's more of like a psychology like <laughs> experiment that got Absolutely. into his head that yeah. might have been it I, that's probably the only explanation i can think of for any reason why i beat d lyman yeah wielding that mighty pen as you do <laughs> um yeah, that's 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 there's lots of different uh, there's lots of different approach, uh, approaches. Um, so it looks like um, we're gonna be jumping in, and we'll see uh, see how these guys do. Um, let's see here. Um, uh, I think yeah, we're we're starting right now. Awesome. Here we go. All right, so we have we have information that Josh banned Paladin, and Gern Blan Gern Blanston banned Mage. Um, so. Banning I think Gurn just sense. has a beef with Mage because I think he banned that. Wait, Gurn banned Mage. Why is Josh playing Mage? Um, it looks like that's a mistake. I believe uh, that's think... wrong or free win for Gurn. Well, uh, we'll write it out. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll try to figure that out in a second. Um, maybe we have. Maybe we got the bands mixed up yeah. because it looks Gern like Gurn seems okay with it. To play. <laughs> also, <laughs> it looks like Josh's Josh's mage is a mech mage, something you don't see often, um, and that's something that does extremely well against druids. So it looks mm -hmm. like maybe Josh is going the opposite direction of what uh, what Furpo is saying is basically going for the druid corner. Um, 
and bringing mech mage he's got rogue which out tempos druid usually well if you're if, if it's played well and you have a decent hand it can usually out tempo druid very well mm -hmm. and then perhaps that warrior is uh patron anyway what do you guys think of our old our old uh friend mech mage doing how do you guys feel like it is uh in this meta uh mech mage is one of those decks that frustrates me is because like you'll get on a streak with mech mage and you'll feel like this deck can beat anything like why don't i play this deck all the time and then there are other games where you just, like, it feels like you have, like, an ace of spades in your hand, like a Yu-Gi-Oh card. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> You're just like, this is the worst deck I've ever played in my life. Like, nothing is sticking on the board. So I just hate decks like that that can just be so wildly inconsistent. But right, that's me. Yeah, it's one of those decks with, like, the Mech Warper and stuff. Like, it, it really can have, like, one of the best starts of any deck in Hearthstone where, like, it's yeah. well, three. Is so it, I think that's just a hallmark of mech decks in general. Because the right. other, the other example I would give of the perfect, the deck I would play every time if I could pick my curve would be mech shaman. Oh right. yeah, yeah, absolutely disgusting. There's actually an intern in tournament I once watched. I forget exactly who it was, but in tournament, um, a mech shaman won on turn three against a handlock in in a tournament. It was pretty Love insane. It. Um, with those Whirlings, Appomattox, and dot Rock Biters and whatnot. Um, well, to return to this match, just to clear up some confusion, it looks like Josh actually banned Mage and Gurn banned Paladin, so that makes a little more sense. Uh, returning to this game, what do you guys, like, what's the plan here for Gurn? How is he going to escape the, uh, the board presence of this Mech Mage? I personally, I'll, I'll just break the ice here. I, I personally think that this is a, uh, a Force of Nature turn. Um, I think that you cannot afford to allow the mech mage to um, have mechs on board going into turn four. The uh, it's the especially blast not a uh, yep. The blast mage is just too much threatening, so he yeah. can clear the entire board here. And if the if the druid can take control of the board, ooh, no, oh. no, oh. no, 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 oh, Gern. yeah. That was a bit misplay. He could have, uh, using the uh, Azur Drake on the Mech Warper would have been the ideal play there. Um, so slightly miss, miss uh, there's a slight misplay, and that misplay is going to be... Okay. Um, I thought mm. he might go with the Blast Mage there, but... Josh I think is... this is fine. Okay. Because That's this fair. guarantees, the Blast Mage is going to do four, you need to do three, so there's a pretty good chance he would do only one or two, and then you'd be able to trade and get some va value back out of the Azure Drake to kill the Blast Mage. Right, yeah. and this Blast Mage should kill this. Uh, it's a 50-50, I guess, but using Gurn Blanson using the uh, the BGH here is a little bit risky. There's um, there's there's always a Dr. Boom in these Mech Mage. Wow, that's a BGH in Josh Sampson's deck. That's odd. Very odd. Um, very, very odd. Well... Uh, Gurn is going to be able to swipe this off, um, but he his, his health is starting to get pretty low. Um, I mean, he's got the the lures in hand, but you know that's only gonna that's a temporary fix with the healing if he does elect to heal. Um, yeah, you gotta figure at least one of those is probably gonna wind up healing. Right. So he's absolutely. just looking at an additional two cards. How how do you what what is what is BGH doing in a mech mage deck? What do you guys think? Like, is there is there any specific reason you'd see that? Probably well, kind of makes me checking for the matchups. But so. I'm wondering if he was really targeting Druid. I guess yeah, I guess they, they you've got Doctor Boom to take care of. There's the one target. That's just the yeah, that's the only one yeah. though. that seems seems a little odd. seems like a bit much. Yeah, for a deck that generally is going to try to do so much with its tempo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now he's and playing. Try to get like, out early. Yeah, you're just gonna gonna play a tempo BGH so often. Right. Well, Gurn can heal here, and he has to heal here as he's staring at a uh, eleven, twelve. Uh, so he's yeah, he's definitely gonna heal here though, as he's like one or two off uh, being killed. It's not gonna matter though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the fireball should just be lethal, right? Mm-hmm. Eighteen. 18. So that's like Xaxes, right? That, that eleven. Plus the pain. It's on the nose, yep. Yeah. On the nose. So Josh Sampson catches the Druid uh, with... It, that was a really good uh, prediction. He got the, the, the matchup he wanted. Um, and that's and, just... I mean, to get the your win with the Mech Mage like that out of the way, 
It's huge. And it, it, you know, it's on stage, it's off, it got its win. Right. That's great, yeah. Yeah, and what's really big about it is because Mage, like, you know, there's the Tempo Mage, there's the Freeze Mage, there's, uh, apparently there's Reno Mage. Um, yeah, the best, yeah, when you can get your surprise deck to win. Yep. Yep. That's definitely the always, always the dream. And when that deck loses, like, nine, like when that surprise deck, that factor goes away, um, a lot of times you just don't win the match. You just kind of get caught with your pants down, yeah. Yeah, the deck's definitely suboptimal in the meta, um... Yeah, and it's interesting that Josh banned Mage too, because I get. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting because Mech Mage can take out a Freeze Mage. It, it also can take out a Tempo Mage. It's um, hmm. Yeah, interesting bans. Anyway, uh, Gurn's gonna be looking to redeem himself. Uh, he's he still has Druid, uh, Warlock, and Warrior to win with. Um, and he's looking at Josh, who has Rogue and Warrior to win with. So. I, I kind of would like to see a control warrior. Yeah, this is what I really like this bring from Gurn. Uh, he is bringing what looks to be the Fibonacci list. Oh, wait, that's a... that's a. I forget if the Fibonacci list runs... I don't know. This looks like a Turn variant. Of medic. The tournament medic was made popular by Fibonacci, who finished number one legend in, I believe, December with is it. That is that specifically to play against something like Agro Shaman, though? Uh, it's, because it, it's in general, a warrior should find itself with more armor than necessary. Right. It's actually aimed at the Paladin, because it's got the 1-8 body that really, really kind of destroys Paladin boards. Fair um, enough. It looks like we might be seeing two Reno Warriors. Um, <laughs> We see it's a Reno Warrior from Gurn. The question is, is Josh is a Reno Warrior? Josh's, by the way, looks like it's entirely golden. Josh it does loves look that Control way. Warrior. Um, I know that he was when he's on Archon Storm, he brought it very success. He did very well with it and brought it uh, many weeks. Um, his hand is really rough, though. Um, very, very, very rough. Gurn has a better hand here. Now, I I would like to point out Reno Reno Warrior is kind of an interesting deck. Um, but, yeah, like, you have to wonder how good is it. You know, like, I, I, I have my, my doubts about it. It looks like these are both Elise as well. Golden Elise is just awesome. Um, yeah, have it you guys... Kinda it kind of depends on how many dupes he's running. Because I know sometimes when... I, I think we all put Reno in all of our decks right after he came out. <laughs> <laughs> and it went, Eventually, I'm going to run out of cards, right? Right, right. And that's kind of what you felt like with Warrior was... I'm going to keep all my super strong warrior cards, but I'm going to play my entire deck anyway. Yeah. I, I just don't know how strong he is in the deck where you take out those really, those, those, you know, real powerful warrior cards to make room for him. I, I like, I, when I built this deck and I played a bit of it, I, as you said, tried it out. Um, I found myself keeping the double weapons and the double like executes and shield slams. Um, but the thing, the fact of the matter is, is like, I mean, removing double Belcher, removing double Maiden, removing, like, Shield Maiden, removing double Armorsmith, removing that kind of stuff, like, is it hurting you in the end? And is the Reno really helpful in a deck that, you know, can build up, you know, 20, 30 armor? Um, right. I, yeah, it's kind of, it's it's somewhat controversial. It's even been known to gain up to 65 armor. <laughs> right, which, uh, which, which I believe happened to Dan earlier today. Oh, yeah. And I would think Gurn might be maybe running a more conservative list because he did use that shield slam really for like kind of tempo reasons. So if right. he's only running one, I would think maybe you would value that a little more highly, especially against another warrior. So I oh, yeah. absolutely agree. Yeah. I completely agree. So that would be good. That would be very good for him if he's running double because this is going to be a matchup where he's not going to need Reno for quite some time. Um, uh, yet yeah, Josh also, it doesn't look like Josh is running Reno. It looks like he's running just an Elise deck. Unless he is running the double, you know, shield slams, as I was saying, double shield slams, double weapons. Yeah, he did have the fierce monkey. I, don't, I feel like it's probably a little too early to tell. Yeah, fair enough. Very fair. Um, so, so, I mean, they yeah. both have the maps in their decks, and I'm just wondering what your guys' thoughts are. When do you... They're going to find the map, most likely. They, they're going to get the monkey. You drop it as soon as you get it in this matchup. When do you put it down? Uh, well, I, I, I don't have a ton of Elise background, actually. I'm... No, I haven't played too much with her, but I will say that like so. What is the? What exactly is the effect of the monkey? 
Is that a death rattle? Or, yeah, so explain or... that. That's a great question. Let me explain it really quick. So basically, for those of you who aren't haven't played it or aren't familiar with it, you play you play Elise. Elise then puts a map in the deck. The map is eventually drawn. You then play the 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 map as a card. It's a two mana card. And what that card does is that shuffles the golden monkey into your deck, and it draws a card. Um, and so once you draw the gold monkey and play it, the gold monkey is a four mana six six taunt, which is a very good card, obviously. Once you play that gold monkey, um, you then transform your entire hand and the entire deck into legendaries. Random is legendaries. It a, it's a battle cry, though? It's a battle cry, yeah. Damn. Okay. So the thing I was hoping is this... we could do fancy nonsense with shield slams and Sylvanas, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, to answer your question, Furpo, I, uh, I think in this matchup, like, you just want a ton of threats. Like, you just, I, I would probably drop it almost immediately. Um, the gold monkey. It depends on the board state, obviously, but um, I think like this is a matchup where you're not in dire straits a lot. Like, right, this is a matchup that usually goes to fatigue. Like, it's kind of a slower matchup, so that's where the gold monkey really shines. Um, I have seen people play the gold monkey when I was playing decks like Freeze Mage or um, a deck that had a little more aggression to it. And what would happen is they would play it, and then I would just get ahead on board. So I actually beat Show in a mirror. A, a, a priest mirror where he played the gold monkey but i had like four or five minions on board and he then had no way to respond to those minions except play very strong minions which i could then ignore because i knew he had no deaths or you know tombs um so like right you of, lose all spells you lose all of your reaction like you have there's very few minions that can interact mm -hmm. with the board um and a lot of legendaries don't so it's you have you need the the match to be going extremely slow is that's a very long answer, but that's kind of my thoughts on it. Um, so in this matchup, I would probably play it immediately unless the board states in a situation where I need reaction. I'm going to stop talking. Woo. That sounds good. <laughs> this is a pretty awkward turn for Josh, I think. There's no, yeah. I mean, do you use There's your execute one on boom? I think at the end, yeah, yeah you just, if you're going to wind up executing, you just take it in the face real quick. And... Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, I think that's totally fine. Like, you know, he can also shoot not... slam and then still sway in the face. There's no real point to getting that armor first, but. Uh, in, a, in a warrior mirror, I very much value shield slams over executes. Um, so I would have preferred to see the swing into the face and the execute just because in a warrior mirror, generally you both have so much ar armor that execute is just kill anything for one damage, whereas. The, or with one for the way around yeah shield slam is. Where, yeah sh i'm sorry shield slam whereas execute obviously needs the activator and you won't have a weapon up all the time or a minion out um and so i, I mm -hmm. in my run or in the mirror i mean he just top deck just occur that's so good in the Basically, mirror to be the first one to get him yeah. right massive you're definitely not wrong and that's that's dr just right there better than dr boom in the mirror um that that's huge uh, obviously this goes to fatigue a lot I actually am really interested. It looks like Gurn's in a pretty good spot, um, but I'm really interested. I think whoever draws the Golden Monkey first, yeah, m that might be a big impact if this game goes long enough. Um, it, although Josh is definitely in kind of an awkward spot, he's he has not he's kind of run out of. Um, it looks like he wants to play that Alex. Hmm. I mean, Josh needs to assert some some dominance with these some aggression because he's basically been on on his back foot this entire game and uh gurn's been kind of dictating the uh the terms of the board um yeah That's and fair. gurn is going to be able to get some tournament medic value here uh if he if he chooses to we could also just get some reno value although i don't well reno sure is really powerful in the mirror if you play it in fatigue like you get That's really true. low oh, and right, then you right, reno, they might die next turn mm-hmm um, so he might be thinking about that, but the way they've been both playing very aggressively, um, both of their decks seem to be very minion heavy. So they've just sort of been trading huge Whoa. blows. Ooh. That's an enormous. Do you I would roll go the for dice? the other boom bot. Go which for the other boom bot and then play oh. Baron Geddon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, boom bot into Geddon. One and four if... shot. It's fifty fifty that the boom bot will hit it, and then fifty fifty that it'll kill it. Well, ah. Geddon's fine here. Oh, Geddon, Geddon. Oh no no yeah. no no. And how often does that happen with boom bots? Where like you hit it with one, you could see it. He was already mousing over the execute, 
had his turn planned, and then all of a sudden you see a four, and you're like, and you're like, oh, maybe I'll just do this second. for free instead. <laughs> yeah, that's too often. I mean, Boobots are nine. They're they're each like free, right? They're just not. You take the seven seven body or whatever, but that's a nine mana minion that was like right. ostensibly killed by Boobots. It's so stupid. Um, well, Josh is continuing to drop bombs on the board here, uh, and Gurn's gonna wish he had an execute now. Yep. I mean, now, yep. like, wow, what do you do now? Like, I guess you swing in and bear and get in and hope you're still alive. Oof. You can't leave Rag up, especially. Like, Rag's one of the most dangerous minions. I, uh, this is, this is where that yeah. execute would have been nice. Also, Gurn, we've seen two ofs from Josh. We haven't seen any two ofs from Gurn. So he may actually not be playing two ofs, which would be really unfortunate if he just threw away his execute and his shield slam like he I did. Mean, and one of the ways to play around Rag, though, he does have a lot of cheap minions. He could just flood the board, armor up, and just hope, you know, Rag has hit face for the last time. I... <laughs> I don't know. I um, you could play your own Grom and go face. I don't know. He, yeah, I like this play a lot. Oh, I don't like this play as much. Don't like this play as much at all. He's so low on health. I really would have liked him to prioritize that Grom more. Um, much much more. I, yeah, I, I don't think you're going to, like, you drop, so you drop Baron Geddon and, and you armor up, and, like, I don't know, you're at two less, oh, wow. Well, there's the, the maps of the Golden Monkey. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't really agree with that play. The, the, and then he can just, like, Reno next turn. It looks like he'll probably still Reno. Um, and, yeah, it's going to be with... Oh, there's the Fierce Monkey. It's going to be... Uh, with with Gurn, with having the tank up is just so big. Like, he's going to get up to 30, 38 this turn. Um, it's pretty, pretty huge. And there's no world where he doesn't Reno here, right? Because I guess he could Tournament Medic, right? Um, yeah, that would come out of Grom range, and then you'd also have the Todd. So that would be a good option, too. Yeah, tournament medic actually might have been okay, right? So he goes up to nine plus seven. But would it have been any better? Sixteen, yeah, because then you could have Grom armored up. Could've... That would have been the one big mm -hmm. advantage. Right, mm -hmm. right. I mean, yeah, I don't know. He could also just start rebuilding with tournament medic, and that would be pretty big. Um, he might be able to hold on to the Reno for more value. Although I guess twenty three is just fine. All right, so Josh is going to... Both of these guys have just had to throw away their Groms. Yeah, and that's that's pretty rough. Gurn here can just use the uh, Gorehal and the Baron Geddon. He can silence it. Josh is getting pretty low on cards. To give you guys a card update, Josh is at 15 cards and Gurn is at 15 cards. I don't think either of them has drawn a card uh, because... Uh, they've One has shield slammed. Or, uh, shield oh, blocked. shield blocked, right. But Josh also, he... Um, he Drew the map to the gold monkey, but then he also played. I I don't know. That's cycles, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's just one. That that, that just cycles. Adds yeah. it, but then it keeps going. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna finally see this Baron Geddon come down. Maybe. Um, yeah. There it is. Baron Geddon, hero power seems good, and Josh doesn't have a great response here. Pretty awkward. And this has just been, I mean, how many of these turns have we seen where they've been, like, one damage off of a hey, clean removal? It's... Right. Oh. <laughs> well, there's there's that, and this is... Boom. All Legends. Oh, Ooh. God. Look at those two from Josh. <laughs> uh, full... Oh, my God. <laughs> those are, like, two hey, of the worst Wolf Legends. Ram Shield has a place. Yeah, wait, I need to use I need to screenshot this really quick because I don't know if I've ever seen a gold, gold wolf, wolf or a gold millhouse. I, like, I have both in my collection at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty rough. Uh, oh man, so Josh here. 
What do you do? I mean, I don't think you push face. I don't think you owl. I think you kill off the 6-6. Six, six. The, so the problem does, is... Does a golden gold monkey make all of your other... Not uh, that they were no. already gold. No, they have to already be gold, which is kind of BS. Like That's so kind of total BS. If you have a golden Elise, it doesn't translate to a golden all-legendary deck. It means That's garbage. Nothing. Yeah, I was pretty disappointed by that. Um, but yeah, anyway, Josh looks like he's got a full golden control warrior Elise, whatever this is. Um, anyway, so that works out for him. Um, man, Josh has got to be really disappointed. The good news is he's now going to top deck a legendary every single turn. Gurn here has got to be a little concerned because he doesn't have a good way to refill the board once he kills off his Baron Geddon. And that's pretty rough because... Uh, he is going to owl it. Interesting. And he's going to go face here. And that'll kill the both. No, why would you no, ever attack no! it? <laughs> why? Why would you ever do that? Oh. Gurn. <laughs> gurney, 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 gurney. That's oh! actually... It's Varian Wynn. Oh! oh, it's Varian Wynn. <laughs> that... <laughs> That's amazing. It's all going to be minions. Oh, here oh they come. Oh, my God. Shing. Oh my god! Oh my hey. god! Are you kidding me? Oh my god! Hey. <laughs> Whoa. It's a party! Oh, you do but not I... face take this. You do not face take this seven damage. Actually, whatever. He used his Grom. But oh how... my god! Varian Rin, OP. So Varian Rin, 10 mana card, just pulled out a 6, an 8, and a 7. 15, 21 mana worth of minions onto the field. Yeah, yeah, that's great and all, but he also cost you two battle cries. So, uh... Yeah. <laughs> if the if the, <laughs> the minions he pulled out weren't free, then I agree. And Lothab is just... Doesn't do not, anything. Doesn't matter at all. It's a five five. He just farts. <laughs> 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 oh my god, this game's insane. Oh, yeah. Gurn's out of here. It's nothing. Well, we're going to get to see more of that Gurn, Gurn Blanston Reno war uh, Reno Warrior. Josh is Josh is now 2-0, right? Yeah, Josh won the yep. first game with the so. Mech Mage. So Josh just has Rogue. And if you're Gurn, you just go straight back. You go straight back to the Warrior. Rogue will never get through that Warrior. Um, If you're Furpo, you go straight back to that paint. <laughs> yeah. yeah well I, we actually have like a little indoor uh uh like uh like uh some cat grass here and i've actually been distracted by that now i'm just watching that grow there's just so many distractions <laughs> oh. there's so much there's so much going on over there in california so yeah. activity. <laughs> oh josh just went offline that's never a good sign all right well josh as i said he has the road mode? Gurn Blanston, hoping to avoid the sweep, has Druid, Warrior, and Warlock left. Um, if the Warlock is... Warlock's going to be really tough to get a win yeah. against the Rogue. But, you know, the, the Druid definitely, you know, that's definitely like kind of a 50-50 there. Um, a lot of Rogue players play that, that matchup wrong. I'll be interested to see if uh, we see that. Um, and then the Warrior is almost an auto win for Gurn. So, you know, since every win matters in THL, you definitely go with the, uh, the guaranteed wins. And Gurn just went offline. All right. Well. That's fantastic. Is it, is, are people still here in the call? Yep. We're yeah. okay. We're all here. We're okay. <laughs> um, great. Well, well, we'll get into that game. They're, it looks like they're going to, they're coming back online. Um. Yeah, so so if you're Josh here, yeah, you Gurn, you have to go back with the Warrior. Absolutely. Well, I see what happened, and what we just saw is after that top deck with the Varian off the Gold Monkey, Gurn probably, I'm guessing, punched a hole in his computer. That'll happen. So he's, yeah. probably, he's probably getting either on, like, an iPad, a tablet, a phone to, like, start it up there. <laughs> to finish just it grab, out. Yeah, grabbing some sutures real quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Gurn does go back with the. Uh, oh my God! Is this the, gold too? The wear. <laughs> this is all gold. I know Josh crafted an all gold rogue. Pretty proud of that. Love rogue. Uh, I do not like heal bot and rogue. I think that's pretty bad in this meta. Oh, this is a uh, this is a uh, Mali. This is Mali, yeah. And that yeah, that's a that's a uh, 
a, uh, a pretty dead sinister strike then for quite some time. That's a pretty dead hand. That's a terrible. Oh my. Hand. That is just like the worst possible hand any rogue could ever have against a warrior. And Gurn's got a sick curve here. Uh, wow, the double prep. Josh hates his life right now. Um, yeah, the Maligos Rogue is going to do a lot better against Warrior than an Oil Rogue will, but I don't think there's still... I just don't see it happening. Josh will need just, like, insane... He'll need his ET to capture, like, 10 different minions. Oh, he found the... Uh, he 100% should play the SI here. Okay. Um, you Really, the, warrior, the, the Rogue's goal here is to just play minions on curve and then, like, keep Warrior health and armor down. Uh, Gurn has weapons. He's got low cost minions. Gurn is going to run up. Wow. Okay. So Josh finds the most important card, um, especially with this hand in the ET. Or I'm sorry, the uh, auctioneer. But so for Josh to win this, he's going to need ET to capture like everything. It's going to need to include Maligos. It's going to need to include um, Sinister Strikes, Eviscerates, um, a lot. So I, it's going to be kind of tough. Um, that ET turn is going to be have to be really carefully constructed by Josh, so he could one shot basically the warrior and get all the Maligos um, value he can. Yeah, and that, that like ET could be the thirtieth card in his deck right now, right. and we're just going to spend the next you know thirty minutes watching the warrior slowly grind this out. Um, well, at least now it'll take a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thank you, Hillbot. <laughs> Oh, wow. It's a tempo right, heal bot. Um, yeah, I want to point something out as well. Like, this is something... So, rogue players, like, they're, they're, they're going up with this. This is, like, an uh, almost impossible to win matchup. But something that happens a lot, too, is, like... So, Josh can't use any of the spells in his... He can't use any of his cards in his hand right now, right? Mm -hmm. he, like, you have to save those eviscerates for, for burst. But there's going to be all these minions. Shredders, monkeys, whatnot, coming down. Oh, that was a misplay to play that before attacking. Regardless, um, but what's going to happen is Gurn's just going to hit Josh in the face like a bunch of times with a bunch of minions, and Josh really can't afford to play minions or spells, but prep sap maybe? That's that's really awkward. Oh, I... Oh, no! God. Oof. Wow, he finds the blade flurry. So he's going to be able to Blade Flurry here. Oh, my God. He finds the... Oh, that's even better. Oh, my God. Conceal's huge. Um, really ballsy by Josh. I didn't know he was playing Conceal. Well, he's if he's playing Conceal, then he actually might be playing the um, Miracle Rogue, not the Maligos. Mm -hmm. uh, the Miracle Rogue. But the BGH, the BGH is interesting. That's usually more in a Maligos build. Kind of hard to say. Oh, no. He's playing the Sinner Strike. He's definitely playing Maligos. Uh, well, the conceal is certainly going to help him. If but... you're Gurn here, is it worth rolling the dice on Armor Smith Coin Brawl? Oh yeah, I would. I agree. I, I, I would too. Totally yeah. would. The auctioneer is. I mean, he's seen both preps. Like the whole deck is built around that guy being yep. stealth. A stealth auctioneer is like insanely dangerous. And it looks like Gurn is. He's a. He's a. He's a gambling man. I think we're going to see that play. I really like that play, by the way. Yeah, especially, I mean, you saw the, just the real awkward use of preps last turn. So you've got yep. to figure he has a weird hand. You don't want to yep. give him any outs, like just a huge auctioneer turn. I completely agree. Oh, no, no, not gonna no. Go for it. Uh, not going to go for it. He's going to go with the Elise, and that's going to be, uh, that, that's going to be trouble. Um, Josh has eviscerates trouble. and stuff, and... The interesting thing is Gurn's really done kind of a bad job of keeping his armor up too. So Josh has got kind of a dangerous hand too. Like he can push the only some thing damage. Josh is lacking is any kind of spell damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um well makes that blade flurry pretty awkward. I would like him to sap off I you open with a sap. That's a hundred percent. And on I who? probably on, on, on the probably shredder. Yeah. Because on Elise, you don't actually want to give them double maps right you don't want to give them double maps although honestly at least isn't that threatening um yeah that's a really bad top deck um you can eviscerate or um 
I, you could eviscerate the one four. I mean, he clearly is trying to save his damage for Maligus, which is correct, and that's why I say this is so awkward. So he only gets one draw. That's really, really awkward. This is. Just... I think the right thing to do here is definitely to kill that armor smith, though. I guess he's worried about yeah. execute. Yeah, but and you've that's seen that there's also... a You see, there's a Reno though, and there's twenty cards left in Gurn's hand. Pushing the four damage to face is really good. I I, I kind of yeah. like that. That I kind of like that turn from Josh. Very awkward. His hand's awkward. He doesn't have a lot to do. Um, I think if I had to look at the sequence of plays, I think he dropped the auctioneer a little prematurely. Um, and now he has no for him, Huh? It seemed to work out for him, though, because he had a hand of absolutely nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Yeah. It, and now, just... his, now his hand is just mostly nothing. <laughs> So you're uh, saying yeah. there's a chance. <laughs> Ooh, coin Lotheb. He could also Owl. Yeah, I like the Owl. You get the guaranteed kill on the Auctioneer. Right, yeah, and you can deny the damage. It's actually pretty significant yeah. to kill this off. I love this play. Kill it off. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's just, I mean, he's just going to be able to armor his way out of this. Josh is also at a, at a, at a kind of meager. Oh, and the backstab shows up right on time. Um, I mean, and the fact the armor smith has been alive now, that's kind of, like you said, he was low on armor before, but that's kind of made up for some of that, those early turns where he didn't get that armor. Right. No, 100%. Uh, Josh, yeah, he's going to be able to flurry this off, which will be really, really nice. And he can just drop this, uh, this, uh, pillager. What? Wait. Well, he's denying three armor there. Um... All right. Well, but he could have just hit it in the face. It, it, it was a it's wash. Well, thing. no, yeah. it wasn't a wash because he could have saved damage on his on his on his belcher. Belcher. Yeah. So he slight misplay. That's fine. Um, Gurn here. This is where like having the Reno warrior and it looks like Gurn doesn't play any two ofs like not having shield slams and not having death bites and other weapons to I mean, I guess he has the gore howl. Um, I would definitely play the. Uh, I would one hundred percent play the uh, Grom and kill the Pillager here. Mm -hmm. The other thing, if you're Gurn here, you need to be really aware of Maligos and how to kill it. Like you have to be able to kill Maligos, so you need to be thinking how you're going to respond to a Maligos turn. He has the Lotheb, so you have to really, really, really like hold that Lotheb for either another Auctioneer coming down or Maligos coming down, because um, mm -hmm. Brawl is just doesn't doesn't feel good. Well, I mean, that's a, you haven't seen ET yet, though, and you, you so you know he doesn't have anything discounted. So right. you kind of get like you you'll know when to drop Lotheb. So I wouldn't feel too worried about it for a while, at least. Right, and like, ooh, so that's like the highest attack minion. Face taking that is just really ballsy. Um, I would have liked to see the the Grom. Josh just has has nothing to do here. This is really, really rough. But uh, he's... By the way, Josh has about 23 points of damage with, with uh, Mali, or Maligos down. So he's got a lot. And right now, Gurn's sitting at 17. Um, not a great... He's got no prep, so he'll need to... The Maligos will need to survive, and he'll need to survive that whole extra turn. Right, so Josh has the coin. So if he gets ET with a Maligos in hand, he could play all... He could play 23 damage. Um, with okay, Malagos. yeah, yeah. I am one to judge, considering I missed lethal two turns in a row, and then also <laughs> playing this deck. Um, this is just a... You always attack first, and then add armor. Um, mm -hmm. Slight misplay. Um, but Did he already use his shield slam? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Okay. So, Gurn's gonna be able to develop board. Gurn with is definitely has a lot of pressure here. He's got the Grom in hand. He's got like nine on board and the uh the Gore Howl up. So Gurn definitely in a pretty good position from a board state. I he definitely needs to really get that health up though. Um Josh just not with a lot to do here. Sapping not the Shredder all. is okay. Is totally fine. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of the warrior cards have battle cries. So like the Shredder is one of those ones that just feels good to sap. Hitting the face is, I like that. Seems okay. Especially since a lot of warriors play, um, wow, that's a heal bot. Right. Well, Shape that's, long haul. that's, a, yeah. <laughs> that's a great top deck. How many heal bots do you run in your, uh, your control warrior, uh, Jeff? Um, 
About two? Trying to remember if it's two or <laughs> if I also have some. I might have some Earthen Rain. Yeah. The Farseers in there too. Some uh, refreshment vendors, I want to say. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to remember what the exact mix is of those. Of the healing. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes sense. It's it's good, you know. And absolutely zero shield maidens. Right, because shield None. maidens, you know, it's just a, it's kind of shield maiden gives you five armor. When a heal buck gives heal buck gives you eight health, exactly. So you do the math. <laughs> and well, this is kind of going back to the Reno, the awkwardness of the warrior Reno. You have right. things like heal bot instead of shield maiden, and then you have things like mind control tech instead of shield slam. And we've seen mind control tech in his hand. I it's think the entire day. time he's been playing this this deck. Both games. Yeah. Gern, Gern taking his time here. I, I would like to see a, a hero power. I think you just hero power every turn. Oh my god. Ooh. Oh, oh right. His next turn lethal. Right. Yeah, that's, he's going for lethal here. That's awesome. Sorry. That was, a, yeah, that was, that was a great play. Yep. Uh, he has, he has lethal. There's nothing Josh can do here to stop it. So that's going to be game one. No surprise there. Gurn's deck, while a little funky, certainly uh, good enough to take out a rogue, which is very in favor. This is certainly like, this is probably the worst matchup in the game for, for Josh. Um, so not expected to win it. If I was Josh, um, I mean, there is some merit to just hiding information. Like, I don't know. I guess you could play it out, but it's... Well, it's he, didn't play, he didn't play a Sinister Strike. Exactly. I don't think he gave away that it was Malagos. Right, he just showed the auctioneer. He showed the good seal, and so maybe Gurn's gonna think this is a miracle rogue that has like. But the... to give up on that, to to have given up that early would have been to just throw the whole game. Which is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, like it's almost like playing freeze mage into control warrior. It's almost that bad. Where it's like I don't think this. And the thing is, this like, granted, Gurn's deck's really awkward and weird, but like, it has a lot of healing, and I mean, it has Reno. Like it has a heal bot. Apparently, it has medic. Like, I don't know. I just, it's going to be even harder to win than even a normal control warrior, potentially. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, Gurn had some really awkward turns where, like, he couldn't respond to things because the deck was kind of subpar. Regardless, Gurn gets a win with it, and Gurn has a Warlock and a Druid left. So, um, if you're looking at Rogue here, you got to go with the Druid. Um, Warlocks t uh, typically struggle against Rogue, no matter which type it is. Um, just by the fact that like Rogue can burst them down from uh, very high health. So if it's a Reno lock, the Reno doesn't do much. Mm -hmm. um, and Druid, yeah, against against a Maligos Rogue, uh, Druid's very, very favored because it's so much slower than a... Um, the, the Maligos Rogue is so much slower than a Oil Rogue. Uh, so yeah. This hand from Josh is... And it doesn't fantastic. want to use that all of its burn to remove right. the threats That's... from the Druid. That's one of the biggest things. So, like, Oil Rug beats Druid a lot by playing, like, a super high tempo game, meaning it, like, preps Sap, and it plays a minion. So it plays a minion, it gets board control, and then Saps off the Druid, and that's, like, enormous tempo. And it can beat a Druid that way, because the Druid, you know, Druids play, like, one minion at a turn, and it's, like, very mm -hmm. easy for Rogue to out-tempo. But you can't prep Sap when you're playing a deck that really revolves around prep on the Auctioneer or the Maligos. So it's really kind of awkward. Also, Josh's hand is, or I'm sorry, Gurn's hand is just pretty crazy. A little too crazy. Yeah. He, well, he's uh, going to need to come into some good cards here soon. The Azuril help cycle. That's true. Uh, for Bo, are, are you a Druid man? Do you, do you play the Druid? Um, you know, uh, I'll pack it in THL when I just need to get a deck banned. But uh, <laughs> I, I almost right. hope, please ban my Druid because I'm, I mean, I'm great with it. I'm excellent. You're the so best. it's a great thing. It's a you great thing. It's bad. Trust me. If they there didn't ban, if they didn't ban that deck. I rarely play, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you don't ban Furpo's Druid, you're probably gonna oh. maybe re possibly regret it. <laughs> oh, 100%. that's definitely a chance. There's definitely a chance. Well, Josh's hand is just fantastic, and Gurn's hand is fantastic. Um, this I think is... this looks. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, anytime you see the double innervate and just any piece of the combo in a Druid hand, you know. Uh, rage inducing shenanigans are coming. Oh, absolutely. And the thing is, like, both of these are extremely powerful hands, but the fact of the matter is, Druid's much faster. So, like, they'll both just power their way through, but the Druid's going to get to home base faster than, uh, the, uh, yeah, than the Rogue. Uh, so, if what you're are you Josh, doing in this situation? Yeah, if you're Josh. If you're Josh here, this is kind of what I was saying. Like, if this was an Oil Rogue, I would, without a doubt, would drop the Azure Drake and then, like, prep Eviscerate or something. But, 
since he's really valuing the coin and the prep, like that's just not a possibility. Um, and he's, yeah, he's what he's gonna do here is he's gonna go into auctioneer. I would like to see him oil, or he should have certainly poisoned there. Sorry. Um, I would have liked to see a poison there and potentially even an eviscerate. I think taking four to face is pretty rough. And um, yeah, Gurn, this is a this is a no brainer. This is just innervate to boom. Boom is just the worst thing a rogue can ever see. It's just awful. And you just saw that really awkward turn. Like, yeah, I, I there's would just like nothing else for Gurn to do this turn. Yeah, it never oh, yeah. feels good to to float a man off innervate. But no, but this is a hundred percent the right call. Yeah. I like this a lot. Yeah. He does. He he does play well around uh, betrayal. Very well done. <laughs> and he attacks in with the the shade. Uh, that's a really good call as well. Rogue can really you know it can it can reach that shade pretty easily. So he's gonna cash in the four damage. I like that a lot. So now Josh is gonna pop off like nuts with this uh, auctioneer. Too bad he has to use the coin first. He has to use the coin yeah. first, and he can't. I mean, he can backstab. He doesn't have a flurry, so he really needs to. He really needs to. Let's see here. Um, the flurry. Who's he gonna anything. backstab? So he has to. He should backstab the. Uh, I think you start with backstabbing the uh, shade. Okay. I would have liked backstabbing the shade a little more. Um, because now I guess he's going to eviscerate the shade. Interesting. Yeah, he really needs a flurry very badly. If he doesn't draw a flurry next turn, he's screwed. Um, he find see, that play is just... Ouch. Right. And that's just lethal. That's for lethal. Yeah. yeah. I, that was kind of an awkward play. So... An alternative play would have been to like just go for the Azur Drake there, and he could have killed the boom without taking the face damage with the Azur Drake. I think that play was a little greedy. I think Josh's both these games seems like he's kind of rushed into his auctioneer turns, because um, like look at that play. So the Druid is going to put you to four health, right? Like you're dead to anything. Um, you're dead to any part of the combo. You're dead to swipe. You're dead to like pretty even a, claw. a, a Drew the claw, mm -hmm. right? So, like, if he had thought out where his health was going to be, that, that play just was really odd. Um, well, it's a hard deck to play, and it's definitely not favored, so you can't really blame Josh there. Gurn is crawling back into this. He's going to have to win with Warlock, though, and this is going to be Josh's big chance here. Um, uh, Warlock is really usually unfavored, and, and no matter what rogue it is, generally can take out any Warlock um, because they have great board clears. Wait. Oh, this is a Maligos Warlock. Who's unfavored? The rogue is unfavored against the Warlock? Uh, no, no. Warlock, the Warlock is usually unfavored against Rogue. Okay. Um, because Reno Warlock is built around Reno, right? And then the Reno doesn't do much when Rogue can kill you at 24 health pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Zoo is, you know, board dependent, and Rogue has some of the best board clears in the game. And it can even out-tempo the Zoo. This matchup, however, is definitely... This might be the best Warlock against Rogue. Um, this is a really interesting matchup. I, yeah, very, very interesting. Have you guys played much of uh, uh, of uh, Maligos, uh, Malilock? A bit. Not enough yeah. to be able to speak intelligently on it. Well, I, I think the, the closest I got was in that one tavern brawl where you, uh, <laughs> you played Malagos for one. I loved right. him in that Good one. Time. Man. That was a fun brawl. Well, uh, Gurn has an amazing hand. Uh, Josh's hand. I hands do know that Malagos Rogue usually runs two BGH, which is just a total waste against this rogue. Yeah, the BGHs will be pretty dead. Yeah. Um, and Gur well, Gurn Gurn's hand is just absolutely incredible. Um, interesting yeah, attack there. Yeah. He's gonna go for the Thalnos Shiv, but like Gurn can just play this. This, hey, uh, uh, Gurn oh, can just play this I thought it was Dread Steed. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Gurn can play this Bron Bronze Beard, and that's just going to shut down that really weird play from Josh. Um, kind of an optimistic play. I I think, look at this hand. Like, you have to play Bron on curve here. Gotta, I think, gotta play well, Bron. 
And why, though? Why is Baron any better than the Imp King boss? Just because of what could happen next turn? Well, yeah, you've got the Twilight Drakes, you've got the Corruptor, like, it's just so good. And then the, the Rogue, like, clearly Josh was setting up for a play there. And then, like, he would have denied that. It just seemed like it was a really, really... Uh, it been feels strong. to me like you're walking into a, uh, an Eviscerate, though. I mean, but if he eviscerates it, like, he's losing nine damage. <laughs> like, I don't know. Well, does Gurn still know that this is a Malagos thing? A Malagos oh, that's thing? fair. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't. That's totally fair. Well, Gurn, uh, he's going to just play on curve. He's got such a strong curve here. Josh does find five drops. I, I think the only real tell he would have that it might be a Mally Rogue is that Josh has been so stingy with his burn. Right, I mean, I but there's no, way to know. there's no way to know if it's Stinge or right. not, if he's just tearing thing. his hair out because it's at the bottom of his deck. Exactly. Right. That's fair. Uh, Josh plays the the uh, Belcher. Belcher, not always in Mally Ghost Rogue. That's actually an interesting include. Uh, oh, I guess we saw that against the Warrior too, right? Yeah, we did. I uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I've never, I don't know if I've ever seen it in this deck, but um, yeah, interesting. Uh, Gurn here has a really, I think the play here is probably with the uh, the corruptor maybe. What do you guys think? I like the corruptor to clean it up. Yeah, it yeah. sucks. Anytime you have to do one extra damage, it's never fun. So you yeah, can, uh, you can run the aim gang here. He's yeah, going to elect fine. to put the damage on the Twilight yeah. Drake, which I think is just, yep. yeah, just fine. I mean, he knows that this is not an oil rogue, so, like, five health on a Twilight Drake seems just fine, considering the rogue doesn't have oil to, like, clear. Mm -hmm. um, Josh, Josh, we'll see if he learned from the last two games not to play Auctioneer on turn six all the time. Um, it looks like he's going to go with a Sap here, and he's actually going to use an Eviscerate. Um, okay. That seems okay. You're right, just about like the previous two games. Like I think that play was really informed by those experiences. Right. Where he was just I... getting out tempoed and he was that board just got out of control because yeah. he wasn't using those saps and the removals. Absolutely. And Gurn here, so Gurn looking at his hand, like this is not like I don't know. If I'm Gurn here, I I don't oh, I he... like this ET. I like yeah. this a lot. Um I like this so much because he's got a great hand to ET. In terms of just value, it's not great for the deck because obviously you want to discount Mally Ghost and the burn. But yeah, but the brand now just got insane. I mean, brand can combo with so many things now. Yeah. Ooh. What? That's not ever that. No. <laughs> the backstab poison there, and then you could drop backstab poison. You could drop Zerdrake. I mean, you could do. You could even actually that was a really good auctioneer turn. Auctioneer backstab poison. Uh, was very strong because now now Gurn can just discount again. Like, exactly. I mean, he can discount and uh, oh man, that's very odd. Um, this pillager will be able to find the face once, but like Gurn's at twenty eight health, and you've used an eviscerate, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to figure out how important that five damage is, because obviously that play was made with the hope of getting that five to the face. Right, and I just don't... I mean, this deck runs double heal bot. Um, yeah. Yeah, Gurn going with the... the Chris. And by the way, Josh has used both his saps. Um, so, pretty, pretty nuts. Josh... Man is also going to have to trade. He has to 100% trade here. He will get the coin, so his auctioneer turns can be a little nicer, potentially. Um, but there's not a lot to do. He can't backstab anything. I guess he can backstab the one minion that comes off, and it's probably worth it, to be completely honest. So starting with the poison is definitely correct here. Knock that off. Backstab the minion that comes off of it. Um, Josh did get potentially some information that Gurn couldn't kill a 4 mana creature while he top decks the... Uh, the prep. Um, he's going to really want to find a shiv here. That would be the best top deck. Even a Phantom Knives would be really good. Hmm. All right. Well, Josh holds off. 
But look at this hand. Look at look, look at this hand. That is so cheap. Oh my god. I mean, you can drop. So what can, you can do brawn into like Twilight Drake. Uh, Twilight Drake could have like twenty health. <laughs> brawn into Twilight Drake. It'll have. Not, it'll literally have eighteen health. 18. And then, and then have two three seven taunts up. And, and then have two uh, three seven. I mean, he can drop Lotheb. Oh four. That's right. He wants to drop Lothab here, right? So he does Brawn, Twilight Drake. Oh, God. What's happening? Why not Twilight Drake? Oh, jeez. Why not Twilight Drake? He wants to be part of this dragon party. You definitely want to Lothab this turn, and then you just, like, push lethal. Like, forget the auctioneer. Just Lothab. It, it, it won't do anything. Oh, my God. Why not? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, God. But really, what's the difference between 13 health and, like, 17 health on a minion, honestly? Uh, the difference <laughs> is it looks really cool. Why don't you, like, <laughs> why don't you like fun for bro? <laughs> I think uh, 17 is almost a little immodest. It's just too much health. It's just a little, it's a little, like, it's a little showboaty. I don't it's know. A little showy? A little gauche. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did, okay. 13 uh, is just enough. It's not quite a Jiraxis. It's enough. It's enough. Well, I would have really liked to see the Lothib come down. Cause he and then not even use the burn. Because like what is what is Auctioneer gonna do to a Lothib, right? Like, whatever. He could do one spell maybe. Um and then what happens is you push no, we can't. what's that? A Bran Lothib makes every spell cost ten more. Oh right, right. But you right. can't even do anything. Yeah. Yeah, like he couldn't have even backstabbed. Yeah. I mean, this looks so bad right now for Josh. I mean, he's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, he can backstab for three and kill off one of the dragons. Yeah. So is our takeaway that, that Rogue really isn't ready for prime time? Rogue's ready for prime time. <laughs> hush, hush you. <laughs> um,. Yeah. Oh, there's the heal bot. I mean, Gurn, Gurn is kind of let... He's really let Josh stay in this game. Like, he could have shut him out a little bit a mm -hmm. couple turns here. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, like... I don't know. Josh's health's getting low. Josh, generally, the, uh, the Malagos rogues run double heal bot. So Josh could dig himself out, and he has the hand to do it, too. Um... And Gurn certainly isn't slamming the door on his face. He's being a he's being a, a gentleman here, and uh, letting uh, Valera have a shot. Wow, healing. Tap first, right? Coin. Yeah. Okay. Finds the BGH. I don't think he was looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably fine to play here. Even you don't need a heal bot at all. You almost would you play Lothab just to go for lethal next turn? I think that's yeah, yeah, that yeah served and, him well with the warrior, right? Yeah. It worked really well, and it's so good against this Josh Sampson hand. Uh, Josh can drop the ET here and pray, but it's not going to help. There's nothing Josh could do. Josh is going to get reverse swept, um, by Gurn. Well, there's no that, prank when board has lethal. I mean, maybe he attacks your ET, man. <laughs> I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I missed lethal three turns in a row or whatever. Um, yeah. Well, I think we all we all got to see history here because this is probably the last time Josh ever brings a rogue to any. Yeah, it's competitive match again. I mean, we went to the trouble just... of making it gold, so he's to, validate, a matter of faith in it. to validate Josh a bit, rogue is. I mean, I think it's like not even debated. Rogue is the hardest just overall class to play. It's extremely like non-intuitive, um, mm -hmm. and and the. The, the, the version he's playing, Malagos Rogue might be, like, in the top three hardest decks to play in, like, all of Hearthstone. So, yeah, you have to feel for the guy. Like, it's it's really hard to maneuver. And then he played, like, um, you know, playing against a Druid and a Warrior is never fun. So, yeah. That's and it's rough. always tough when you go through two matchups like that, and then the rubber match is, like, your best one. But you've already just had two really tough ones. So Right. Yeah, I completely agree. It's yeah, exactly. Like it gets into your psyche. Like you've just lost two matches in a row. You're up, and now you've lost all this momentum, and you go into the, the rubber match, as You said. I would say that. Uh, um, yeah, that, I mean that was just really rough. But uh, but hats off to Josh for bringing some fun decks. Also, Gurn bringing some 
fun decks. But uh, Gurn takes it in the end, and the Harry Generals, uh, from what I can see, Andy took the win over Alkstraza. So the Harry Generals are, are squeezing on by with the 2-3-2 two, two wins uh, this week so far. Uh, last but not least, in any way, we have MVP, MV Parker, one of the uh, breakout players of Season 1, against Comp. Uh, also a breakout player from Season 1 of the Dream Team. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be a really exciting match. What, so there's a lot of drama surrounding this match. So MV, <laughs> MV Parker... Um, is there or, or, or is there? Dan, Dan, let me have this. Okay. 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 Cool. I, I like to have soap opera moments here on the show. But there is, there is some drama. And uh, uh, so basically to give you some background on this match, Envy Parker played with Supreme. Supreme, in a somewhat unprofessional, rude way, dropped Envy Parker without really even telling him. He kind of uh, wasn't sure what was going on, and Team Rank 5 jumped on the opportunity and scooped him up. And he is, I mean, he's one hell of a good player. He had one of the best records last season. He took down some of the strongest players in the league. Uh, so it, there's some drama there, and he's, he's looking for uh, some payback this season. And uh, he's on that stacked Team Rank 5 team. Now, to add to that, one of the only two players last season to beat him was Comp from Dream Team, or, or Carlos. Uh, so these, this is a rematch. So MV Parker coming back with a Fury and looking for additional... Um, what's the word I'm looking for, Wordsmith? Additional vindication? Yeah, vindication's a great one. I got approval from the editor. I don't know that it applies in this setting, but it's a fun That's a great word, word though. I mean, the syllables... God, yeah, I yeah. feel like this stupid kid in elementary in elementary school, and he's like the nice teacher. He's like, "No, it's a great word, man. That's that's <laughs> fantastic. You're doing great. You're yeah, so." I just can't wait to see what the next one on your word of the day calendar is tomorrow. <laughs> keep me up to date on that, and then maybe we'll use that one in the right side. I hope it goes immensely. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, what a fitting office joke. Um, well, yeah, so it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a really nice, sweet, uh, matchup between these two, and I'm, I'm very excited. Now, uh, I will give you their lineups really, really quick. Uh, of course, by the way, as I said, Envy Parker coming from Team Rank 5, he's bringing Mage, Rogue, Shaman, Warrior, and Comp coming from the Dream Team is bringing Druid, Paladin, Rogue, Warlock. Wow, Comp bringing, a uh, Rogue. That's, uh, it's a bit surprising. I don't think he brought that once last season. Um, do you guys have any? Oh. Do you have any any insight on these on these like uh, these lineups? Any any favors right off the bat? What do you think? Well, I'm just gonna come out and say if if we see a rogue rogue matchup, I'm just gonna put the mic on mute and I'll just be watching like cat videos or something because <laughs> that that matchup will be so far above my head. And I'll be over <laughs> here just like sputtering away with incoherent <laughs> sentences and talking about how much I love rogue. Sounds like a plan. It's past um, my bedtime, so I'll just probably just tune out. <laughs> <laughs> MV Parker is really well known for playing Rogue. He brought it, I think, almost every single week last season. Really, 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 really strong Rogue player. Um, he's also bringing Mage. He's well known for Freeze Mage and Shaman and Warrior. Uh, MV Parker probably bringing the uh, the Patron Shaman. Or, I'm sorry, the Patron Warrior. And, uh, yeah, so Comp with the Druid. You know, he he's, as uh, as you mentioned before, Furpo, he's, he's written a guide on Token Druid. Um, yeah, and it's an interesting uh, token druid. You know, it's like kind of one of those hybrid druids where, uh, you know, it obviously still runs the combo, the ramp, but it also kind of plays that token game too. Right. You sound Very... unconvinced, Furbo. <laughs> you know, the thing is, there's like a druid list that's been around for I think close to 15 years now. I'm not positive. Don't don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me. yeah. The, but, the exact and, names are muddy. Yeah, and we always see the ones that are slightly different than it. And right. it kind of kind of starts, it always kind of shifts back to that one that's been around forever. So, Well, somebody got up to top 100 legend with some nonsensical aggro warlock. Druid. Druid, that's Just what I meant. Nonsensical <laughs> aggro druid, okay? God. Get it right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got the list from, uh, from Mange, and uh, I basically just, you know, played what was evergreen and and tuned out and uh i woke up and i was 100 i was like 72 legend and i was just like i don't know what happened i don't feel yep. like i'm gonna druid i don't know yeah so what probably happened was you went into some kind of fugue state where you shifted that list back to regular druid 
you have no memory of it. And then just your instinctive, the instinctive reptile brain took over. And just said, <laughs> we got to end this. We have got to end this ridiculousness. Do the right thing. Go to the right list. That sounds about right. I don't. Yeah. Have, I don't recall much of it. It was kind of blurry. Um, but yeah, just to to give a background on Jared while we're waiting for these guys, I went thirty two and three from rank four to legend. No asked. Okay, I'm just saying, and I literally <laughs> don't know anything about Jared. I don't have it gold. I was just trying to get it golden. I was just like, it's just insane how good Jared is, and I'm I am so excited for standard. Like I never want to see a Jared again. It's just a class none of us like. No one likes it. Let's be honest. But why would we never see it again? Because they're gonna nerf the combo to hell. Hopefully. What do you, I mean? What do you think, Furpa? What do you think standard is gonna bring? Um, you know, there are so many layers in that mystery lasagna right now. We've got like the nerfs that are coming. That's gonna change everything. We've got a whole expansion that's gonna release, be released. And if it's anything approaching the power level of GVG, that's gonna change everything. So, I mean, I don't want to... I didn't ask I don't make a, a rational, like, a rational response. All right, all right, all right, right. We, you will never play a druid again. They Thank are literally you. deleting every druid <laughs> card. There's not even going to be enough cards in the druid set to make a full deck. So right, it's going to be impossible is, to... You might have 28 or 29, but you won't have enough The auto-complete to... will go, sorry. It's not... A, yeah. <laughs> we'll get around to it maybe with the next adventure. We don't have enough right now. Apologies. This what is, do you want? This... What do you want? Enough druid cards or deck slots? Right. <laughs> So that's what's Make gonna choice. that's what's gonna happen. Almost guaranteed that's probably what's gonna happen. Thank but you. I want authoritative, nonsensical answers like everyone on Hearthstone subreddit. Uh, <laughs> but we're jumping into the bans. Comp is going to get rid of that freeze mage. He's gonna ban it, and Parker is gonna get rid of the always kind of mysterious warlock. It can be hard to guess what's coming. So uh, those are the bans. Uh, very interesting ban from Parker, if I'm, uh, if I'm being honest. He's bringing Freeze Mage, right? And he's bringing Rogue, both of which do very well against most Warlock lists. So uh, a little surprised that that was his ban. Um, was it possible that he was anticipating having one of those banned himself? As uh, was. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people like banning the Shaman. So I, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know. Like, maybe, I, I, it was a good call on his part because... Uh, yeah, his Freeze Mage was banned, so uh, now that he gets rid of the Warlock. Although now the Paladin, if it's Secret Paladin from Comp, and it usually is, it could be very is. troublesome uh, for Parker. Although if Parker's bringing... I guess Parker's actually bringing a full-on like anti-Paladin lineup with Patron Warrior, uh, Agro Shaman, and Rogue. Um, that, and, and Freeze Mage. Like, that's very good against Paladin. So uh, maybe that's the plan. And also from Comp's standpoint, like whenever you see like someone bring three of their four classes, either Weapon or Secret, how heavy do you guys go down that tech route? Well, Furpo, I used to go absolutely full retard into the Kazan <laughs> Flare land, and I build tons of decks. But with the new format, you have to have decks that win. And um, with that in mind, I, I've that actually... Said, if they have three, if you can corner them into having if you're in a situation where you're up against a no well secret paladin's not even worth stealing right <laughs> but so uh i don't know hunter paladin and, and warrior then i feel like it's completely fair to bring a harrison in all the things in all the things yeah yeah harrison would be really good i mean harrison is so good against a rogue and so good against patron in particular like it's okay against paladin if you get an ashbringer it's amazing I mean, if you, it's okay against a control warrior if you get it like a death spite. But like against those two decks, those decks are like they set up huge turns with their weapons, right? Like if you get that death spite on turn four or five, right? You stop. shut down their plans. Yeah, that's enormous. And, it's and that's not so about the shaman too. I mean, you can just take their win condition. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. And generate an eight card draw <laughs> of your own. Yep, that happened in the European qualifiers today. It um, also happened when oh, well. Mains did amazing things. Oh, yeah, Mange, Mange did it to his boy Cassidy back in Season Kappa, I believe. Uh, all right, well, we're going to jump right off, and it is going to be Comp on the Secret Paladin and Parker on the Patron Warrior. I, uh, I'm a little surprised that Comp, excuse me, Comp opened with the Paladin, um, just because if you look at Parker's lineup, it just says, I hate Paladin. Um, and so you might be I, trying to sneak the first win with it, I guess. I don't know. I agree with you. Yeah, I would have liked the Druid start a little bit more, but uh, but yeah. So Comp, uh, Comp definitely known for the 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 uh, Secret Paladin. He's got the Golden Paladin. 
and the full golden secret paladin to be particular that's a golden coin folks parker a lot of gold uh, on stream tonight this is a lot of gold i love it very shiny stream um parker that was is a good, good play there how he drew that yeah how he did that. <laughs> that was that was very skilled you can tell why, why he's got golden paladin um parker with a low theb is certainly uh interesting in this this uh patron warrior uh yeah, that now seem very anti paladin furpo put uh, ha, you have to answer you have to answer truthfully have you played secret paladin have you been have you joined the cancer on ladder um well not uh, on ladder but in thl i have its fruits <laughs> i have brought to thl because i, I feel bad about doing something that awful to a complete stranger right. if i at least <laughs> somewhat know the person yeah all right it's fine yeah yeah no, so yeah, that, so so have you? Did you, how did you know? Like, I guess it doesn't take a lot of skill to. I don't want to say that on stream, but like, how did you know to play? You already did. Okay, I already I already said it, so I'm, I'm in it now. But no, like, I mean, well, with Secret it? Paladin, I'm t I'm typically breathing through my mouth. I, my my hands are clenched into fists, and I'm just pounding the keyboard. <laughs> it's yeah. typically how I play that deck. Yeah, yeah, that that makes sense. Well, Parker is not messing around. He's just completely obliterated comp's board and made a 7-3 in the process. Comp is... A bit screwed. A bit screwed. <laughs> <laughs> um, he really wants to hold a coin here because he wants to play that challenger next turn, so it looks like we're just going to see the shredder, but that just feels so so rough. And if uh, Parker finds a weapon or something, that shredder is not going to be... Could he at all be considering trying to remove it with the... Uh... With his face and consecrate, the, because oh, consecrate no. against patron is kind of it can be a little, but that would be a little crazy, right? Oh, no, I'm no, not. No. I don't think he's not considering it. I also hope he doesn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think be... he's. I think he's honestly. I think he's considering the shredder coin redemption a little more. Got it. If I if I had a guess, but I I don't know. Um, and Comp's definitely a better paladin. I, I I made a joke about like secret paladin taking no skill. Oh my god. Uh, God, that's I, I hate to say I told you so. Oh, God. Out of order, unfortunately. Yeah, that... <laughs> he also, I can actually, maybe the only time I'll point out a slight misplay, he could have saved one point of face damage by hitting. That's true. Also, at first yeah, right, that's what Dan would say. Also, I want to point out that, like, I don't think that's a coincidence that Parker is playing Lothab. Because he, I'm sure, I mean, Parker's an extremely good player. He is blocking the coin right there. Oh, um, for sure. And that's yeah. like, I, that's definitely not just like playing that on curve mindlessly. I think that was purposely blocking that coin. And now Parker is just, I mean, oh, God. Choo choo. Choo choo is right. Although, double challengers with boom. That's, that's some serious business in Carlos. I mean, Sanders. It is on one hand, but on the other hand, Parker's got quite the hand. On the other hand, he's got quite. I saw what you did there. It, I tr it didn't really work, but you know. <laughs> I'll give you a hand. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, Parker can play really aggressively. It this makes perfect sense with his hand. He really does need a weapon though, and uh, we'll see. We'll see how much this mysterious challenger pulls. Uh, Blessing of Kings is good for some burst. I mean, Comp's got all the power. The question is, does he have the time to really uh, get it uh, get it out there? Well, so, if Parker doesn't find himself with any weapons, then I think he might. Well, I mean, but Parker has nine damage on board. He can put Comp to six or uh, eight rather. Well, there's going to be a noble sack, which is going to oh, eat right, 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 right. at least four. Yeah, but I mean, put the, him backs, down to 12. the backswing just won't be enough, I don't think, for I'm, Parker to I'm, be concerned. I mean, I'm wondering at this point if Comp is just kind of, you see your options just start to narrow more and more as you get to these middle turns with Patron. And if he's just thinking, I just need to start throwing everything at face and just hope the secrets land right where they need to. The boom bots hit for eight on that, that, that portrait, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And we see the full Christmas tree. So that's a repentance. Um, obviously, something that would destroy a Patron. Parker seeing the full Christmas tree would not play a patron into this. It looks like Comp might go face here. I agree with this play. I think like I I, I like your analysis a lot, uh, Furpo. Did like, he not swing with his weapon? He didn't swing with his weapon, which 
a little odd. But, you know, I do like this. Like, I agree with what you said. Like, comp, like just at this point, you really just need mm. to, to finish this game out. Yeah, the weapon swing is, is curious, though. I mean, unless he just likes the way it likes mm. Justice looks, like, why do you want that? Why do you want to hold on to that weapon longer than you absolutely have to? Right. No, absolutely. And, and without an execute, or really, I mean, like, a really good way to deal with his board, Parker... I mean, that's a lot of damage, right? So that's 13, 15, 16. So he's... Parker might be a little concerned. He might have to end up trading the Lothab and might get into a trading war. Um, and he can't just drop Boom because he knows that's a repentance. I mean, he has to drop, like, yeah, an unstable goal into, I guess, Patreon, right? Yep. And that looks like that's his play. And with this line of play, I guess he's going to go face... Yeah, that's a pretty aggressive play. So he's going to go face here. Um, Better Spirit's going to do some serious work. Better Spirit so, is serious work. What is that, yeah. 15, 19, 20. 20? Oh, he's one short. Yeah. <laughs> Why? If he had, oh, uh, that that miss hit with the lights justice is... Uh, that's it. That's it. He had it. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. So that miss hit, yeah, that was, that was just the game there. Well... Comp can do a couple things this turn. He can just drop boom. He can go with the second mysterious challenger and really set up. Um, I mean, how, I mean w really quick, what do you guys think about if he had just thrown the boom out there and said, "Let's hope maybe I get lucky." Even but I guess with the the, the grim patron up. Oh, did we miscount lethal? No. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that. <laughs> All right, well, you know, we're ranked 25 casters. It's fine. Don't worry. It's fine. Let's move on. Um, what were you saying for hey, What rank are you right now, John? Like 25. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 108 legend, whatever. It's the same as 25. Um, what were you saying for Paul? Oh, I'm just, when you drop the boom before, you know, Unstable Ghoul goes off and you just hope. Oh, Fox right. Do their thing. But with patrons on the board, and apparently we can't count. Although I want to, I'm interested in going back and looking at the, uh, odd there yeah i i, I uh yeah it's an I was... awful lot like 20 to me yeah he well oh he wait no oh wow so stupid i was assuming you needed to run the noble i forgot that the the ghoul only had one wound on it so he could use his weapon there right right well i also want to point this so out we had so 22 so he was I, fine i would like to say that like that's an enormous win for comp enormous because like, he has the Paladin out of the way. And now Parker's lineup is a little, like, yeah. Like, he, like a Druid is kind of good against Rogue. Druid's really good against Warrior. Um, he's got his own Rogue, so there's that. Like, it's, it's kind of, that was a big win. Because as we were saying, it looked like Parker's lineup was really aimed at the Druid. Or, I'm sorry, really aimed at the um, Paladin. Paladin. Uh, so this is going to be a Rogue mirror. And uh, so if you guys want to... Just watch grass grow or fall asleep. Um, I'll just I'll just start babbling. Um, I mean, this is actually exciting, but it's exciting in the way of like I think when a dog watches TV. I just I don't know what's happening exactly, <laughs> but I'm fascinated by it. So. <laughs> All right. Well, let me. There's there's a few things. The rogue mirror is like really tense. It's almost like a face hunter mirror where like you blink or you make one misstep and you're dead. It's really really tense. Um, Parker. It's like hot. It's like God, yeah. <laughs> basically, um, it's just it's just like who has higher tempo. It's a it's a really really tough matchup, um, and really one that's like it's kind of like a freeze mage mirror too. In that like, it's kind of really awkward. You sap really weird things. Um, so Parker has the Lotheb, which is almost like the game winner. Also, this looks like a full golden rogue from uh, Comp as well. Um, the Lothab is enormous in the matchup. He also has a heal bot, which is also really, really, really big. So Parker's hand looks really, really strong, but Comp has a slightly stronger uh, curve. Wow, Parker is playing Earthen Ring Farseer and heal bot. It's pretty insane. Um, rogues generally do not play double healing. I think so he's is, playing. Uh huh. Is that more of like a classic oil list? Because I know they. they you'd see. To. Yeah. Oh, and Comp is playing Dr. Boom. Wow, these are very odd lists. Comp is playing Dr. Boom and Salsi. That's insane. That's, like, insane. 
Um, the reason for that is South Sea is in very fast rogues, fa like rogues that have very high tempo, double oil lists. You combo it with the South Sea. Uh, Boom is more like slower control rogues that like go a little slower. They get to the Dr. Boom turn and they hope to get a lot of value off him, finish it off, and they generally only run one oil. So really, really, really odd lists here. Um, both these lists are very off your general rogue list. Um, comp, comp in a very good position, but he's missing his turn five. Turn five minions are a really big deal with rogue. Um, so that's pretty unfortunate for him that he could do nothing but really weapon there. Um, yeah, and he so doesn't have, have been the six. wrong call to do a um, to deadly poison and then just eviscerate. The 3-3? Three, three? Oh, no, no. Eviscerate will find a really good home in another minion. Um, a 3-3 three, three is not, not that great. The Deadly Poison on the 3-3 three, three without using the Backstab would have been okay. Um, but he has double Backstab, so that makes perfect sense. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, Parker's hand is really, really, really strong. And he was like he didn't have a, such a strong curve coming into turn 5, but he has the better curve going out of turn 5. Um, he's going to have a really strong turn five here. I would like to see probably the Belcher come down. Yeah. The Belcher the Belcher's just fine here. Um, alternatively, he could play the Teacher and hope that comp won't go face, but that's really, really, really greedy and probably won't quite, work. Quite so. Yeah. Lothab's okay. This is not how you generally want to use a Lothab, but I think Parker is identifying the fact that he's in big trouble with um, with that Pillager down. And uh, what what also he's, yeah, I mean, this is kind of an interesting play. So generally you want the Lothab as a closer. Like you just play it and then kill him next turn. It's a really strong play in the mirror. And this is definitely not how Parker wanted to play it. Um, but how do you feel about doing the five minute backstab here and, and taking five to the face to keep the pillager alive? Because this does seem like kind of a desperate Lothab play. Uh, yeah, that's a really, really strong play. Picking up the SI is also really, really good. Yeah, I really like keeping... The, 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 what's more, the, the, Desper the Desperate Lotha play is kind of correct. What's really interesting is the four attack is really... The four health, rather, on the Pillager is, like, very easy for a rogue to kill. So mm -hmm. if Comp gets the, the correct read on that, which is that Parker has no way to kill it... That's what I'm um, saying, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think this is definitely the correct play. And this would be a really heads-up, like, read by Comp to realize that... Parker doesn't have a way to kill this this pillager, and if he can, you know, pump a pyroblast worth of damage in, um, it's pretty that's pretty pretty, pretty strong. Additionally, um, wow, that's that's not a helpful pickup from Parker. Parker can well, play the. It, uh, oh yeah. Sorry, go for it. Parker can play the Belcher here to just like really try to mitigate, but what Comp can do is he can just sap that and, and crush it. It looks like Parker is going to face tank this. This is really rough. Um, that's 15 Tomb Villager damage. And, and that's all. Oh, even gives him a coin. H. Oh my god, what di list is this? Parker's list is insanely slow. Um, and Comp is going to get, like, he thinks he's in great shape here, but he's about to get slam dunked by BGH. Uh, yeah, this is. This is going to be. Uh, this is going to be. A big, 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 big tempo pickup for... Uh, this is going to get Parker back in the game, this BGH. This is an insane list for Parker. Um, yeah. Pretty, pretty crazy. He goes with the sap. The saps, that sap's fine. Um, Parker here is going to be able to BGH into a four drop. Um, so you can probably just replay the teacher. He can, he can kill off the boom bots. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, that's that's kind of rough. All right, into BGH. Yeah, that's pretty cr crushing for Comp to deal with. But the thing is, Comp is still like he's still pretty ahead on health. Uh, but that heal bot and that Belcher are gonna absolutely uh have something to do with it. That's a pretty good pickup. Yeah, the Thanos yeah. helps for the yeah. He can take out the teacher now. He can clear the board pretty easily here now. Um, but I think. The thing, the fact of the matter, obviously, Comp has absolutely nothing in his hand, and Parker's gonna know that. Um, Parker's gonna know that that's just a coin. Like, obviously, he can keep track mm -hmm. of that from the pillager. He's so, also, yeah. Parker's sitting on a sprint as well, so he's got all kinds of options. 
Well, Parker absolutely needs to get the heel bot or the Belcher down ASAP um, looking at this board. If he picks up, uh, he can also go for kind of a Blade Flurry SI play if he wants to clear it. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. That was super greedy. I agree. Yep. And he gets rewarded for it. Very, very greedy. He gets to hold on to his Eviscerate here. This is uh this has been a really interesting match. Um and I think a lot of that has to do with how these decks are built. Um Parker's rogue is like the slowest rogue list I've seen in legitimately in like four months maybe. Um since for sure since Eloise's been out. So uh what does comp pick up? What? <laughs> oh my god. I, I love how much you're freaking out about this because the amount of rogue that I play, I'm just like, that's perfectly reasonable card to see. Yeah, right oh now. look at that card. That seems <laughs> like a good card. No, these are super tech rogues, and uh, it looks like, I mean, it, your guys' prediction, like Dan was talking, and actually both of you were talking about, like, you know, the weapon hate is really reasonable to see, and it looks like comp agrees. I mean, seeing an acidic swamp boost is insane. Um, something I want to point out is like, rogue it, more than any other like class doesn't really put tech cards in. Like, you don't see Kazans and Rogues or anything like that because Rogue is just really high tempo. So if the minion doesn't really do much, like, if it's not getting insane value, like, for stealing a secret or something, it doesn't really find space in Rogue. Um, I don't know what these guys cut, though. And this is, by the way, a... Oh, my God. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Please, please don't do this. Ugh. This is so rough. So rough. Um... Comp must be feeling really desperate to do that. That's just the game. That is absolutely 100% the game. So MV Parker will just flurry off an oil here. Um, and I know you guys talk a lot, too, about not showing too much. Was that a mistake showing that he's running into yeah. ooze? Yeah, I that was just terrible. Um, because also, yeah, Parker's one, off lethal, one mana off lethal. Um, it was, yeah, not showing too much is really important, but also, like, that play did nothing to the board. Like, you know, it's just, right. ugh. So, comp, Comp's going to drop the Rogue Mirror. Um, really, really, really odd decks from both these guys. Um, he's dead to board. He's just dead. There's nothing he can do here. All right, well, regardless, Comp's going to drop the first, the, the, uh, this game. So, Parker's going to tie it up 1-1 one, one, um, with this win. And that's pretty good to get the rogue out of the way for Parker. Um, I uh, I wonder what Comp was trying to catch. So Comp, I I think Comp really wanted the rogue mirror. To be completely honest, because Shaman's mm -hmm. really difficult for Rogue to win. Um, and Warrior can be difficult, although Patron is uh, probably slightly favored for the rogue if it's played correctly. Um, however, excuse me, the Lotheb in the Patron can be very troublesome for the rogue. All right, well, you guys can wake up, um, and it looks like we are going to, uh, we're going to have Parker with the Patron left and the Shaman, and uh, Comp with the Druid and the Rogue. All right. So, so basically, if you're Comp here, the Druid has a good matchup in the Patron a bit. It's like kind of a 50-50. It depends if they get a huge Patron turn off, but it has a terrible matchup in the Shaman, the Rogue has a good matchup in the Patron, but a terrible matchup in the Shaman. So, um, which one do you play? I guess the Rogue. Who has a terrible matchup in the Shaman? Yeah, this is a very bad matchup for the Rogue. Um, we didn't, like, this... If it was MV, MV Parker's Rogue with double healing and a, and a uh, uh, Belcher, this might be a little bit better. But, like, something like... A Dr. Boom is just, like, 100% dead. Um, just really, really bad. This matchup, like, is just really, really fast. And generally, the Rogue... Like, the way the Rogue can win this is if they can get way ahead on a slow start from the Shaman. Um, Parker probably wants to dump this entire hand. And just looking at Comp's starting hand, too, you can almost see, like, he's got the cards to get bored early if MVP Parker doesn't get those one of those insane starts. The most important card Which in this doesn't matchup, look like he's going to. The most important card in this matchup for the rogue is the teacher. Um, mm -hmm. You can get the teacher out and then like just start. If you get the teacher out in turn three, 
the the shaman doesn't have the time on like early game to um to it, it can't afford to trade into minions like that like a three five on turn three it just doesn't it can't afford to do so if you get a teacher out there wow um that's gonna be huge uh you could be okay i think comp's hand is i mean that's really good pickup but i think overall like i don't i'm not too too sure that can really help tip this in comp's favor by the way just a so just to finish it, the way the rogue wins is it has to play very aggressively. It has to scare the shaman into trading with its minions, or it it'll it'll win. But um, if Comp is only playing one oil, he might not be able to really back up that minion pressure with enough burst. Like a Doctor Boom is just way too slow in this matchup. But he's got to feel so good about a turn one pass from a shaman. I mean that's oh the yeah, dream. and a turn two pass for that matter. And a turn, turn two yeah, totem. Turn two, yep. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, if you're, if you're comp here, unless you pick up a four drop, you, oh, that hmm. changes a lot. That changes a lot. He has to dagger here. You can't afford to coin out the SI, I don't think. I really want to see him coin out the Tomb Pillager next turn. Even against something as aggressive as the Shaman? Because if he has that 3-3 three, three body on, then he has uh, an immediate reaction to uh, Spirit Wolves. Yeah, I uh, that's true. This sets him up a bit ag better against the wolves, but uh, I don't know. I kind of would have liked to see the, the coin pillager. Um, that five attack will really start scaring shamans really quickly. And Parker, Parker's gonna have a kind of weird turn here. Um, and this is where like, okay, so comp. I guess he can. He'll just have to uh, hero power. Oh, the backstab. Okay. Oh, nice pickup. Yeah, um, yeah, that's definitely a good pickup. Uh, I guess he's just gonna not put damage on his SI here. Either I don't. It's kind of a tough decision. Okay, that's that's fair. He's gonna see another one, that, and Parker probably will. Um, let's see if I want. I think Parker will probably trade into the SI here. Oh, he's gonna Earthshock. Yeah, Parker. Parker being a really strong rogue player is gonna help him. In, it's gonna help him form his plays here. But this pillager is. Uh, this pillager is like. This pillager is really good from Comp's perspective, but that uh, that abusive is gonna be really really rough for Comp. Yeah, so Comp. Maybe feeling good here, but uh. It's it's a, it's a, it's an illusion. And Parker can really, really push some damage here. He can play all of his minions. And Comp with no AoE is uh, is going to be sitting there feeling kind of feeling kind of sad. Uh, I think Parker would probably play... Okay, he's going to play around like a Blade Flurry a little bit. Um, so Comp here definitely wants to Zerg Drake. Just see what he draws. Yeah, I don't see where around that. Yeah, he's got to Zerg Drake and then coin eviscerate if he doesn't find um, some way. Like he, the best draw he could pick up is a is a blade flurry. Um, you probably won't see more minions than this ever. So uh, he he really needs to to find that. If he doesn't find the blade flurry, um, he'll probably just want to coin eviscerate the uh, arcane golem. This is uh, this is kind of almost a point where the rogue loses. Uh, I think I would just say like if he doesn't find a blade flurry here, he'll probably just lose um, because. Yeah, there's the Tinkers. Um, and the reason for that is, like, he's now playing so defensively, he's throwing away five damage. on throwing like, away, yeah, on yeah. a two, exactly. Right, and this is just, this is kind of a point of no return for the Rogue. Um, I just don't think there's a way he can possibly win it at this point. You think the um, ooze swing that could be coming up is no. like of any hope, or no? No, not at all. The, the, the Parker has gotten enough minion damage at this point where even, like, losing the Doomhammer is not that big of a deal. He's would, gonna have him down to fourteen. Yeah, I'm very, I would very confidently say it doesn't matter. He has the, the he's effectively at twelve with the. Uh, oh man, one turn off. Well, he can ooze and clear. Um, but. But yeah, he's down to twelve. Actually, here he he doesn't even want to flurry. You don't flurry here. Don't flurry. Ooh, no. So he has the oil. So he could have like you want to get the oil flurry. 
Um, he should have sapped the Lepronome and then run the 4-4 four, four into the 2-1, I think. Um, but, oh, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, he might, might with the Lotheb, ah, uh, maybe, maybe I'll look like an idiot. He might actually be able to come back out here. I'm, I really am rooting for the Rogue here. Um, he, he has the board, well, uh, okay, I may stand corrected. Uh, if Parker doesn't, if he, Parker doesn't top deck into some damage, um, he might be in some hot water. Those are not good hero powers for Parker. Um, he's really looking for, obviously, the Hunter. The Shapeshift's fine. You definitely take it over the Fire Blast. Right, As because you can buff it with right. uh, your weapons. You're, you're not going to be like hitting any of these minions, obviously, and so um, mm -hmm. you're going to want to be gaining health. If if Comp gets the win here, that would be really cool and really big. Um, and that's going to be a great sap target. So Comp can, um, he can sap here and, uh, and, and Tinkers. Oh, the back step's huge. Yeah, that is great. Oh my God. So he can sap Tinkers. Wait, actually, let's do some math. He has seven on board. So he puts him to, yeah. So the Lotheb actually gives him next turn lethal. So I stand comp completely corrected. Comp's going to be able to win this. Um, it looked really, really, really bleak there for a second. Um, but yeah, comp comp able to pull it out. Uh, pretty pretty insane. So you backstab the one three. You definitely sap off the totem golem. Oh no 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 no! Wait, wait. oh my god, comp guys, no. I don't think he can hear you. Wait, never mind. Oh, he heard me. No, I, I said <laughs> oh. no. Oh. Nine plus three. Does he still have it? That's twelve. No. No. He doesn't. That was he missed. Oh, well, he could. God. Giving me a heart attack. He has nine plus. He's got twelve. No, he does. He has it. Twelve plus. You can sap the leper gnome and do the oil. Twelve plus seven is twenty-one. Or nineteen. Never mind. Oh my god! He top deck the lethal. <laughs> he didn't have it. He didn't have it, Dan. Yeah, I forgot about the armor. Yeah, he he was one off. Wow, he top deck lethal. Well, the rogue wins. I I love to see rogue win. I love I love to see shaman lose. So uh, pretty <laughs> a good pretty day. Yeah, pretty good for comp. Uh, some questionable plays there. I I definitely didn't think he'd be able to win from a couple points there, but he stuck it out. And the ooze tech. I mean that's that yep. was the game. That was literally yep. the game there. That 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 uh, doom hammer. And something like shaman is so obvious. Like, you know that's exactly what they're going to bring. Right. That's what I was saying earlier, yeah. And I think I another... Seen. When you look at the tech, too, I think it would have been easy to get super greedy. I thought, if I pack Harrison in a rogue, I'm basically getting a sprint against a shaman. But right. the ooze was, like... That's obviously just, like, the perfect tech to have for the rogue tech. It fits It fits on the curve. It fits on the curve a little bit better. It's two mana. You can sneak it in on, better, on other turns. Well, Comp is going to come out here. Is he going to be playing his very uh, his patented token, token it token druid, or is it going to be mid range? It looks like it's mid range, although I don't really know the token list by heart. Um, and he, yeah, yeah, we'll see. I would be I surprised if he didn't bring it because he. I mean, you know, you, the, you, when you do one of those uh, competitive Hearthstone posts, you know, those mods require you to show like a ridiculous amount of proof. That you're as good with the deck as you say you are. Like, I mean, I'm talking. You have to keep stats, screenshots. They want like blood type, social security numbers. <laughs> right. Stuff. And he he backed it up. So when you're that good with a deck and you have that kind of success, I mean, why not bring it? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. he. I actually was watching Ryzen, who is a well-known rogue streamer. Um, I was watching Ryzen one night, and Comp ran into him on ladder. I think two or three times in a row. And he just obliterated Ryzen. Like, I think it was like three times in a row. And I think he once had like, he, I think he had two back to back games where he had turn four lethal. Um, so I can, I can definitely uh, attest to uh, Comp's abilities with the, that deck. It doesn't look like that is the deck he's bringing. Um, this is going to be, this is a matchup where the uh, Druid is very unfavored, typically. And, uh, Especially with this hand from Parker. This hand's insane. Parker just 
can't stop thumbing that tunnel, tunnel shot. <laughs> I think comp right here, he's, he's doing that pro play. He's acting like he's got a bunch of options with innervates and wild gross. And he's pretending that, like, you know, what am I going to do and try to throw Parker off? Um, and he's just going to rope it, you know? That's a... Uh, yeah. Maybe I love this is. play. You know, that's a, just a great play. I, mean, I love it. No, yeah. I love that play. I also love the fact that, like, when I see my opponent just, like, you know, just chomping at the bit with a card, you know, make them wait. Make them sit on <laughs> that, you know? They don't, they don't need to play it right now. Now, this is going to be awkward when he actually literally can't do anything on turn two. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit awkward. You definitely hit the 1-3 just in case you get an innervate so you can keep her at next turn. This is so awkward. Because also, if... Envy Parker coins out so, like I feel uh, like after doing a whole long bamboozle turn on turn two, he was like, ah, the jig's up. But you, I you guess could have I'll just He could have top decked the wild growth. So. That's true. Yeah, but Parker's a good enough player to see a top deck card. Yeah. Toto they... Golem is just disgusting. This is this is this, this is, is going downhill. This is the aggro paladin we all Hey, there's the yeah. use. Well, oh, he's Tempo BGH. Feral spirits are incoming, though. Yeah, I mean, as wins. bad as Infy Parker's start was last game, where he basically skipped the first two turns, this is just the classic shaman start. Yeah, this is this is the thing that gives you nightmares. Um, yeah, comp comp here. This is a no brainer BGH. Uh, maybe still sticking with the bamboozle plan. I like it. He's really bluffing a lot considering. His <laughs> And Parker, Parker's ready to throw some wolves out there. Get a nice, what is that, five or four, four, two, three, four. My God. Seven in the face, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, God, that's so gross. Well, Comp needs to definitely, this is a keeper of the gross, straight to the four, two. Kill off one of the wolves. And the good thing is Parker will only have two mana next turn, and his hand does not like two mana, so he'll just probably play a Leopard Gnome or something. Uh, is there any play outside of the Keeper to the 4-2? There's nothing, right? Like, I'm not missing not anything. Okay. No, the swipe yeah. doesn't do anything satisfying. Right, right, right. Yeah, he can he can go into keeper. I mean, he got the the Drew of the Claws a really nice pickup, and with Parker's hand, Parker doesn't have like a spell to just you know get rid mm -hmm. of it. And with two mana, he probably won't have a good way. I mean, his best top deck would be like a Crackle. Whoa. Um. Oh no. That does no oh, way. What? You got to get rid of the. Right. You got to get a body on that. Yeah. You get a body and you kill the highest attack minion yeah. on the board. What? The... <laughs> well, Parker's looking for looking for outs for cop. You almost it's it's weird, but you almost have to hope he gets Doomhammer. Exactly. And it's just it's gonna eat up so much mana, maybe that slows him down enough where he picks up another Druid of the Claw, he can kinda taunt up. I don't well, know. the other thing for comp, though, like, killing off leaving the four attack minion is really significant because now the Druid of the Claw, like gets just really cleanly killed off by Parker. Right. Um, and yeah. that just that just doesn't seem right. And now like if you're comp here, I don't think you drop the Drew to the Claw. You just I think you have to play the four minute keeper of the grove. Like kill off the four attack minion. Um because if he has an Earth Shock, like he's gonna push too much damage. Yeah, I almost uh, feel like or he's, another fair really he was really hoping for the, the swipe top deck, maybe was what he was playing for. I'm not sure. Yeah, I uh that was that was pretty rough. Um but I mean comp pulled out the rogue win. Um, you know, he might have some plans. Uh this is oh man, that top deck. Look at that hand from Parker. That is that is fifteen damage of just Jeez. pure burst. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> <laughs> Shivers. <laughs> Well, comp will be able to force of nature, but it's too late. Yeah. You know, guys, I know we, we kid around about the trigger warnings on the Facebook thing all the time, but you might want to put a warning in this video <laughs> when people are looking at that shaman hand. Oh, God. It really... Oh. He just can't stop drying, reach, and burn. This is... This is disgusting. And MV Parker is going to go with a little BM here. 
Um, and he gets it with the Shaman. So we are going to go to game five. Is this the... Was the first match, did we get a five? Or no? I we think didn't. so. Did we? It's been a... It's, been, it's definitely been a... A long night. A long yeah, we night. Went, we went five in the first one. Yeah, so we went... It's, it's been all three twos. Um, and it's... They're, they're living up to the... To the all three twos with no shortage of Reno-based. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting the Reno Shaman there. I thought that's what Ify Parker was going to bring. But. Oh, man. I ran into a Reno Shaman last season on ladder, and he was, like, ranked two, and it just, I could feel, like, just the pain and frustration oozing out of his monitor. <laughs> it was so sad. And it was, like, the easiest win of my life. Um, anyway, comp is... Just, just let me win. It'll be funny. Like yeah, <laughs> it's come on. Cute. That's you know, it's come cute. on. That's the pity concede rank right there. You're climbing the ladder just by people who don't have the heart to finish you off. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be a really interesting match <laughs> where if the druid gets ahead on board and Parker can't get basically Parker just needs to find the patrons. Um, Parker's hand is really really strong. It has a lot of draw. It's got that great mid range shredder and even the war axe, but um. Just out of curiosity, like with the ooze, do you just eat the first weapon you see, or do oh, you no. want to try to get that no, premature you want to eat the bite? Yeah. yeah, because when he you... sets up the death bite, you assume uh, that a uh, patron's on the way. Right. Yeah, because like, like yeah, it's just so big. It's always go after the bite, never go after the axe. Um, and Parker at this point may be anticipating, like he's seen ooze and rogue, so he might be just anticipating it in every deck. Um, so comp may uh, might. Might have oh oh, oh. that's Bad. so sick. Go ahead and drop that ooze. <laughs> and he might lure Parker into a false sense of security there. That was a sick. Oh my god. That's well nice. yeah, and that's really strong. That's such a strong tempo play because now he gets to kill the acolyte. He gets to one shot the acolyte. He gets to curve into his shade. Um. Also, not a full golden druid. Is this the first non-full golden? It is of the night. Yeah. <laughs> Just doesn't let Harrison clearly a tech card. <laughs> so Parker, Parker, uh, he thinks he's he's outmaneuvered comp, and he's like, ah, I baited the uh, the weapon mo removal. Little does he know, his uh, despite's about to find a, a nice museum. And you got to give comp credit for that, because that's got to be got to be tough to put a one non golden card into a deck. But oh, you, oh, it's so rough. I, 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 it's, it's hard. I think when you do something like that, the, the biggest thing you can hope is that you're not going to go second. <laughs> so that you aren't reminded of it, so you know? You don't have to look at that, that, that non-golden coin glaring. Yeah. <laughs> Frankly, it should be called the Tarnish coin like, <laughs> uh, from the Tavern Brawl. It would well, be next level if MVP Parker picks up on the fact that, wait a minute, that's not a golden coin. Wait. <laughs> Wouldn't it be a golden coin? Yes. What could he have possibly something put in? Something is this? afoot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, but something in there is common. Well, comp here is kind of a difficult turn. Um, I, I think you definitely want to coin out the... I, this is kind of hard. I can't blame him if he wants to keep her here. I would like to see the coin used. Maybe he just is too ashamed to use it, though. Silencing that is, seems... Really odd. Um, I think it seems fair. There's well, a lot of good silence car targets in yeah, the there sure are. Patrons and Frogs and Felcher. Yeah, there's a lot of other things I would have liked to see silenced. Well, um, oh, wow. That's a really good top deck. Uh, he has the, uh, the Azur Drake. He can go with that that combo if he wants, or maybe just set up the taunt and let the uh, little warrior figure it out. But, well, which one would you go with? Would you go with the, the Drew of the Claw or the Azur Drake, like, kind of... Uh, I would probably I would probably go with the taunt just because we saw the Belcher, which probably means he doesn't have a bite because that would have been a great turn right. just to pay off a minion with it. So sure. just because you're not seeing that proactive play from the warrior, just right. or get defensive. Yeah, and there's no reason and to. And the like, living roots are just going to kill off a one three, and that's. Oh no, no, I would, spell I would use the living roots and the uh, druid of the, the. Oh, and a keeper. keeper. Yeah, but I, I right now, now that he's gone with the taunt, there's no way you want to use living roots, um, because. This way, you also can wrath for one, 
if he swings in with the sludge belcher. Right. Yeah, no, I think you definitely want to sit here um, because also your shade's going to grow and your shade can one-shot the Belcher. Like, you have a, other, a myriad of uh, options next turn. So just let that rope boil down. Also, I really like... I I don't know if Comp's doing it intentionally, but Parker seems a little, like, kind of annoyed and maybe a little... He does. Like, he seems rough. a little twitchy. Yeah, mm. and, I mean, get <laughs> every turn by Comp has got to be good to him. Yeah. Also, Parker's hand is, I mean, it's got some strong minions, but it certainly isn't what you need to beat a druid. Because you can't beat druid on just, like, minion trading. Because the druid has a combo, and you don't. Um, so the druid, as long as it can kind of keep minions there, uh, you just can't win with this kind of hand. You need a, you, you really need the patrons. Uh, from comp's perspective, also, keeping the coin allows him to coin out Dr. Boom next turn. Just throwing that out there. Uh, and he, I'm sure he was considering uh, the value of the coin right there. Is Parker, do you think he's really given this thought or is he saying, all right, fine, I'll play the waiting game? <laughs> uh, I think he certainly is giving this thought. I think he's maybe even considering like how what he needs to use Lotheb for um, because he, he could block the coin. And um, yeah, I think that right. he's definitely giving this thought. This play is going to get pretty hard. Uh, this play is going to get destroyed oh. by a Zerg Drake into a uh, Wrath. Coin, Wrath, yeah. Wrath, yeah. And, and this is and, one of those scenes where playing against Druid is just feels so bad because when your hand is small and you see that board they're building and you see a huge hand on the other side, you just feel like I have to clear everything. Yep. No, and I completely agree. You... Yeah. yeah. And that was a really costly play from Parker. He used a lot of cards there and they weren't that efficient. Um, he, he used the Inner Rage in a way that he didn't draw with it or combo with patrons, and that's never mm -hmm. fun as the uh, as the patron wear. Um, comp here, this is just a really straightforward play. You drop the Azur Drake, you coin into the Wrath, kill off the uh, Frothing, run the 2-3 into the 1-2, and then you unveil, unveil the Shade on the 1-3. Um, even if it gets executed or removed, you can't let him draw. It's so important he doesn't draw. So and killing he can't that... draw if you're two attack minion, yeah. Right, and killing that Acolyte, well, even, like, they have Whirlwinds, they have all sorts of things, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. killing that Acolyte is definitely a huge priority. He's got two cards in hand, so this is not, Oof. not the, I do, I very well, he's just going to trade the, the shade in. But the, the thing is this, Parker is out of draw. Like, Parker, mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. he now has the potential, I mean, and there's the inner, like, so, God, that yeah, I think comp might that might have been. Yeah, he's going for it. This could be two draws if it hits face. Yeah, if that doesn't, yep. Oh. Yeah, and now comp Parker's totally back in it. That play, oh, he can even whirl in. I mean, he can find. He has to whirl in. He'll find. He'll, he's gonna get three draws off this accolade. Oh, is he? I mean, he's at twenty-eight health, and it's not turn nine. I don't know if the Lothab's necessary. I would probably whirlwind into Shredder, but. Okay. But once again, I mean, if you put yourself in VP Parker's shoes, it is so hard to think rationally when you see that much attack on a druid heading into those seven, eight, nine turns. Right. That's true. That's fair. Well, is that, what's 21, 6, 27? So he's one short if he did have an innervate combo. Right. Uh, well, comp here is going to just want to kill. Yeah, and then just go face with it. There's no no way he trades here. Just go face. He goes for the lucky boom bot, does nothing, go face, yep. Also, killing that with the boom bot, actually, that's not maybe not even a lucky play. He might have been, now it can't trade with the Azur Drake, so that was actually exactly. okay. That's pretty heads up. Yeah, comp, comp in a really solid position here. He doesn't have the full combo, but he does have the Savage Roar, which is n enough to get the kill here. Um, Parker needs to look for, like, he has enough to kind of kill off the Belcher in a ghetto kind of... <laughs> um, get away, I guess, for lack of a better term. But uh, sub, -optimal. yeah, definitely suboptimal. But uh, comp with the spell, the spell power swipe will clean up whatever Parker plays in addition to uh, to killing off this uh, Doctor Boom. I think comp's in just a great position here, and uh, Parker definitely, definitely Let's... trying to avoid uh, echoes of the past. I mean, he definitely, he totally has options here. Well, his options, but the fact of the matter is, as as Furpo said so well, like he's he's in a situation where um, right. he's Comp behind on the druid. 
Right, the Druid has firm board control, and he's he's the one kind of reeling to find answers. Um, all right, so we're going to see this play, and he, he looks like he's in an okay spot, but um, it's it's all a ruse. And these, these top decks are, I mean, Comp can uh, spell, pat, he can just draw and then swipe fate. He has a lot of little options here. Um, I would definitely start with like wrathing for one, you know, drawing on one of these. Um, he could living roots for three on the shredder and pop it and see what happens. I think that'd be a good place to start personally. Yeah, I mean it's mm -hmm. one mana. It's a pretty good way. Uh, and you have to innovate. I, so even if you do spend the one and draw force of nature, you're fine. Well, you don't draw with the living roots. No, uh, when you. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. I was thinking of doing the Wrath, but then you are short by two. Yeah, there's there's no way he can find lethal here unless he Wraths into a swipe, maybe? Uh, no. he There's no way he can find lethal here. So he's going to start with a Wrath for two. Okay, go for the draw. Finds nothing. Swipe that. Okay. And then I guess he'll go for the Wrath for two again on whatever the Shredder drops. Ooh. Bummer. Wrath for two. Well, he's got to make two. his mind quick. Kind of a, I think a pretty suboptimal play. Hmm. Well, he's setting up the lethal, right, by playing these. Yeah. But I think, oh, wow, and he's going to, that's going to get denied. Um, That was a really, really kind of suboptimal play there. Oh, wow. And now Parker is going to be able to clear the board. Um, and I think we'll see Comp just Harrison this off. Yeah, I think so too. Parker thinking he's dead. Uh, Comp can mm. oh. Parker oh he's not dead he's he's above no, yeah. oh and the top oh. too. Oh. So Comp yeah Comp's play might have been a little like right, so I think is, you just use the Harrison here and whatever. This is what I would have liked to see. Um, All right, well, he's going to Harrison, hopefully draw like a Shredder. Oh, he finds Innervate. Parker's got to be <laughs> fed up. I mean, Parker, even with one card in the hand, like, I think that was a great play by Comp. He has to hero power in there. But just to go back to the play before, I would have liked to see him pop the Shredder and then use both the Wraths, on, like, for one on the minions, and then swipe face, mm -hmm. um, just, to, just to be clear. Well, Parker draws dead-ish, and that's going to be game. Um, as, right, Parker goes up to 17. A four attack minion goes into that. A seven plus... Yeah. Seven plus ten. So that's exact lethal. That is exact lethal for comp. So let's see if he sees... I'm sure he will. Um, 14, 19. No, it's not. 21. It? No, he's got 21. He can hit with his face. He's got the, he has innervate. Oh, his so innervate. innervate. Right, power. okay. Well, the innervate. But without the innervate, it would have been exactly evil. Okay. Well, Comp finds the win, and Parker... Hey Parker, unable to take it home. And actually, the Dream Team has been been has been very bothersome to the uh, Team Rank 5, as Cassidy got swept by Smoke Salmon. Um, Inbulk did not play his match, so he got the DQ win over Night Smoke. Rad Dreams was taken out... Um, Actually, while we were casting, he was taken out by Jesus, uh, three to two. So right now, the uh, the entire uh, the game is tied at two two, and uh, it's all on Killa Jive and Lemur uh, in the last game. So so Team Rank Five, uh, very stacked, but Dream Team not going down without a fight. Um, and that's going to be the cast for us tonight. Um, yeah. So uh, any any thoughts, guys? Any any parting thoughts? Um, I mean, I think anybody who saw that last match, if they take anything from me tonight, it's if you see a druid, do your mental health a favor. Don't play it. <laughs> Ban it immediately. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I would have said more, but my teeth were clenched. My jaw, it was so hard. I think I cracked a molar just seeing the, the top deck into the combo there. So that's my... Uh, it's almost a public service announcement. It really is. It's... it's it's And the druids. You can prevent druids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had some we had some crazy games. Um, yeah, like I, a lot of uh huh. And I also just I think tonight showed like 
how fun it is when you can you know khl you, f you feel the pressure to play the meta decks but if you have a deck you're comfortable with if you have a deck you love it does well in these matchups i mean we saw some great matches from some decks that were off meta or you could tell were just favorites of the people who brought them right unless you're josh samson and you like malagos rogue because right. that's just... <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, that's the last time we ever saw Breen Rogue, anyway. So we also saw history too tonight. So right, we saw the we saw the death of Rogue in Josh Sampson's eyes. I'm assuming every one of those gold cards has been dusted by now. <laughs> <laughs> He's just burning all his Valera posters. <laughs> the the relationship's been shattered. Yeah, he's throwing um, away. He just he, imagine he's taking like his block of kitchen knives and just dumping it into a trash can right now. <laughs> um, anything sharp at, at the house is being thrown away. Yes, well, uh, that that that's very true. I think we had some really really fun decks tonight. It was it was a really really fun cast. A great way to kick off the inaugural uh, salty Saturday. Uh, Hurts any any parting thoughts? You have to follow uh, up poetic well, Furbo. Yeah, he's he's better at words. <laughs> uh in general uh just as a as a courtesy to your casters and your uh your audience i might suggest not doing reno mirrors <laughs> to those who might be on on cast on, on this stream in the future but feel free to probably we'll now see an influx of them because they'll be like oh we said there that we shouldn't so the other guy's not gonna <laughs> Yeah, yep. That's another good public service announcement. The option to watch videos at two times speed is only available on YouTube and not actually live in client. Live on Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So we'll a, see lot of, guys a lot of guys after this. Right. Well, uh, yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. And as always, you can uh, you can tune into Tavern Talk on Thursday to get your recap on the full, you know, full week one of uh, THL. So uh, for Verde. Hertz Donut and Furpo, thanks for joining us, guys, and we will also, see you. Also, uh -huh. remember if you have any ideas, even however minor they are, for articles, so yep. annoy Furpo about them, and he will write the whole thing for you. Yeah, he'll I'm, write. I'm, I'm, putting my, I'm putting my cell phone, my home address. You can come in the middle of the night in person if you want, throw a brick through my window with a blog typed up, ideas typed up onto the brick. That's fine. I, That's a submission option. I wasn't even hearing typed up. I was just hearing idea. Like, you can just like say a word, just be like, one just word. Be like, nerf and then he will write like you know 1500 page article on it that's what i understood yeah what's well, gonna read absolutely. that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well yeah so again yeah check out check out the blog there's i mean it's been really really active we've had player profiles we had a bunch of new stuff there was a really cool article um that just went up about uh grim and sort of you know coming into the league and whatnot so uh, definitely check that out. And uh, yeah, Dan kind of shattered my beautifully constructed exit, but uh, we'll, we'll limp. You we'll did limp. great, though. We'll limp out. We'll limp out on this one. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, everybody. All right.